text and joking too Sipping and roasting is what we do Light them up, drink them down Whiskey and cigars all around Cheers, y'all Well, 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 well That's a party Welcome, fellow travelers, to this edition of Smokin' and Toastin', the radio program, podcast, and video extravaganza known worldwide as Hi, Mom. Smokin' and Toastin'. Uh, it's nice to have you here with us for show number 234. Now, how about that? That's halfway we, to 300. We should do something special. I'm thinking, let's have some awesome bourbon from Beam Centauri. What do you think? That sounds like to celebrate a riot. two, three, four. It's show number two hundred and thirty-four, <laughs> and I am excited to be just just be here and be a part of it. Our uh, guest today is Adam Harris. He is the Bur- the Bourbon Vivant. I like that title. Well, thank you very well, much. We've had some very creative titles over the past uh, uh, over the past couple of weeks. Beam some Tory seems to have a thing for titles. Yeah, yeah. You guys I, are pretty believe... good like that, aren't you? <laughs> I believe when we first had uh, uh, Frank Krakenberger on the show, his his exact title was Luxury Specialist. And by the way, we is... apologize for having Frank Krakenberger on the show. <laughs> but uh, but yes, he was a luxury specialist at that time in his uh, in his brilliant uh, until, until he passed his career. job on to Frank. Yes, the other Frank. The other Frank. Yeah. <laughs> we've, so, we've had two Franks. Yeah, yeah. and well, uh, seriously, Adam, welcome back. You've uh, been on the show before, but it's been a very long time ago. So this is a welcome return. It's it's nice to be back, and uh, especially in this uh, numeral numerological uh, special. Yes, special it's episode. a very special episode. Yeah. So we're we're we plan to drink and talk about smoking. I hope that works for There's everybody. There's a star in alignment with yeah. something. <laughs> That's right. Our show is brought to you by MyCigarShirts.com. Great shirts on the web. In fact, Ian's wearing one. That says, you can't hurry up. Of course, the microphone's obscuring it there. But you can't hurry up and smoke a cigar is what Ian Schertz says. Uh, new designs are now available at uh, MyCigarShirts.com. Ooh. There's a cool new one that I like that I, I, I want to get one of them. It says, um, in fact, I'm, I'm going to order it this week. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll see how long it takes to get here, and I'll wear it on the show. But it says, vaccinated caffeinated and ready to smoke <laughs> there you go <laughs> it's like it's like welcome back to the world people that's, that's yeah. real new because i looked on it i think last week or um maybe early last week and i didn't see anything yeah new no on it just i just yet. i just saw that on there yesterday so nice um, i think so it speaks to the too. overall like casual atmosphere that we've come accustomed to in the last 15 months or so yeah. it's like we've gone from the smoking jacket to the smoking shirt right you know? yes. <laughs> or yeah. sometimes just the smoking underwear you know? <laughs> <laughs> seriously that's there's been there's been days uh it's like if you don't have to leave the house and nobody can see you on the porch and you're not scaring anyone no, go no, for it no one can tell from your 32nd floor apartment that's if right, you're just in your that's shorts right. That's, that's right. right if you live if you live on 32 and you're in one of the balconies next to me sorry dude it was just <laughs> luck of the draw you you you, uh, you you should have stayed inside so all right so a lot to come on the show today adam harris is here from beam suntory he's brought i already see you can I just show this to the camera? Please I already do. see one of the things that he's brought, so can't wait for that. And uh, there's some other very interesting-looking bottles there. So uh, the Bourbon Vivant is in the house, and we will uh, we will do our best not to embarrass ourselves too badly in front of him. So <laughs> uh, special thanks, by the way, to uh, Doug Ward, the uh, national brand ambassador from Whistlepig, who was last week's guest. That and, was so and, fun. And you know, I, I I loved Doug, and it was our first time to meet him, mm-hmm. and he was just just a very easy, fun guy to hang out. And get along with, but imagine what it's like to be filling the shoes essentially of Dave Pickerel as the ambassador for the brand. I mean, that guy was just—he was one of those one in a million dudes, you know. He oh. he was just—he was as good a, as good an ambassador as the spirits community ever had. Dave was a legend in his own time. Yeah, he and, really uh, was. He really was. And that's kind of like Ian, who's a legend in his own mind. So. I am. <laughs> so it, it, it sort of works out here. It's awesome so, in here. Uh, <clears throat> yes, it is. So. <laughs> no place you'd rather be, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. We'll also be doing some uh, interesting beer tasting today from Distill Brewery in Normal, Illinois. We'll be trying their blonde ale with pineapple, coconut, mango, peach, and guava. That's a busy blonde ale. Yeah. And it's called Hawaii Five Ale. Nice. Because it's got name. the five different, you know, and it's got that tropical, and, and it's a good name. I'm thrilled, actually, at some of the creative naming that's happening in the craft beer community right now. Uh, here's another one from Brewdog Brewing Company. We'll I be, love them. We'll be sampling their Elvis juice. 
<laughs> it's and a, I love that name. It's a grapefruit infused <laughs> IPA, and I have not had this, so I'm looking really looking forward to uh, trying it. And finally, from one of our favorites uh, in Placentia, California, the brewery, which is spelled B R U E R Y, we'll be trying their bakery. It is a bourbon barrel aged imperial stout, and on the top it says sticky bun. Oh, so nice. I think that's I think that's what they're going for with the uh, right. with the flavoring. So so that'll be fun. So we'll be looking forward uh, to that. Uh, drinking news will return on the show today. The uh, drinking news teaser headline is "Follow me on Instagram." We'll get to All what right. that means. We'll talk about some of the new cigars to watch for. Uh, some of the things that California's raising taxes on cigars again. Wait, uh, I'm yeah. super surprised. Uh, I know, by I that. know, you're totally shocked, right? California is so screwed right now because you know not only did they already have this huge budget deficit as a state, but during COVID, when people found out that they could work for their tech company remotely at home. A lot of them decided, why am I paying San Francisco or San Jose, California rent? And they moved to like Idaho or Texas or, awesome. or right, someplace, right. and they're working remotely from there. So California has seen, you know what the hardest thing to find in California right now is? Besides a place to smoke a cigar? Yeah, a U-Haul truck. Oh, I bet. Because <laughs> they're all leaving and none of them are coming back. Well, so They've overpriced everything. Right. And, and so... They're going to tax the cigars. Right. I was going to say their response to this is, oh, we have less revenue coming in. Let's hike up the tax on cigars. That's, that's my favorite part. We've already made it so you you can smoke anywhere you want in California as long as it's not outside or inside. Right. Okay? Mm-hmm. Everywhere else is perfectly fine. Uh, but let's go ahead and raise taxes on that, and, too. And let me complain about something else here while we're at it. A friend of mine, uh, uh, someone I'm very close to, not going to say who because I don't know if they would want me to share this, but this happened over the last week. They got a note from their apartment complex in our city, in Houston, uh, admonishing them for smoking on their balcony patio. Apparently, in this particular apartment complex, you now not only can't smoke inside, which that's true with a lot of apartment complexes, but you can't even smoke, like, outside. If you're within, like, 25 feet of the building. Oh, hell no. Yeah, no. And I'm like, uh, yeah, guess what? Here's my notice. I'm leaving. <laughs> if that was if that was me. You just served like, me a 30-day right. notice. And, and so it just it, it made me really happy with my building because not only is it okay for me to smoke outside, but there's also this great little alcove down on the eighth floor. You've been out there yeah, uh, yeah. before when we've had parties. And you stuff. can hide from the wind and the sun. <laughs> That's right. And the rain, and by the, the rain. way. So this last week when there's been all that rain, I've been able to sneak down to the alcove and uh, and enjoy a, a cigar, too. So anyway, uh, enough with that. We do need to address, though, the elephant in the studio. That's my new saying, elephant in the studio. The elephant in the yeah. studio. And and that is this this article that's been circulating the, uh, this week in all, like all the different news channels and news sources, um, and the article is basically quoting a new study. And again, somebody paid money to have this study done, but the new study has concluded that alcohol, drinking alcohol, is not good for you. Wait a minute. Yeah, you know, I was gonna I know, hit, right. <laughs> I was going to hit one of the buttons on this yeah. little machine, but I'm not even sure what to hit after that. Yeah, I mean, it's like, first of all... Like, does that, you know what? That doesn't get this, because that's mm-hmm. way too fun. Mm-hmm. This is way too inappropriate. I think that gets... I think that's the only appropriate <laughs> sound effect. And, you know, once again, as Ian has demonstrated, here on Smoking and Toasting, we spare every expense when it comes to sound effects. So, that's right. Uh, so this is this is what you get. You get, um, you get but no, this, 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 the sound machine. There it is. Yeah, that's Ian's, that's Ian's favorite toy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but to me, and, you know, I only read a part of the article, but there wasn't anything in this article that really I found to be new and different. Listen. Alcohol is not good for you. Tobacco is not good for you in and of itself. By the way, neither is a good steak. Neither is driving a car or getting on an airplane. You know, uh, and I just uh, this this makes me crazy because now you know people are going to see that. I know I'm I know I'm going to have friends emailing that article to me like all week. You know, it's like see see I told you it's like. This is not new information, people. This is the so I just wanted to get to this. This show is about enjoying things. Yes. And 
And to enjoy things properly, you do have to have balance in your life. If I take this home, can I? <laughs> if I take this home and drink the whole bottle tonight, you know what? That's not a good thing for me to do. No. It's no. not good for me. But if I enjoy it in moderation and share it with friends, just like if I enjoy a cigar, there are benefits to my psyche, to my overall being that nobody ever wants to talk about. My favorite part of all this is you know there's so first off there's an article that says this there's an article that says anything you want oh, to say yeah, yeah. you will find an article right. that will give you benefits or it's or just the like doom and gloom of anything it's just like the mask thing if you want to or or, or like the vaccination thing if you want to believe that the vac getting vaccinated against covid is a terrible idea which it's not by the way but if you want to believe that you can find plenty of stuff on the internet to back you up oh so let's talk about the mask thing for just a second my yeah. favorite is when everyone, you're like, now you have to wear a mask in public, okay? So the news goes out and finds, the media goes out and finds all these people like, I'm not wearing a mask, that's an invasion of my rights, and blah, 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 right. right? So as soon as the mask ban's lifted, who do they go out and find? All the people are like, well, I'm wearing a mask anyway, I'm not going to go out. <laughs> See, that's, that's like, the media WTF for Like, WTF people. Yeah, and that's then the, the news has this great way of just sensationalizing everything. Tonight at 9 o'clock, find out if alcohol will kill you. Right. Exactly. And then <laughs> the article comes on and they're like, well, listen, if you drink alcohol appropriately and you have just a drink or two, uh, blah, 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 you will live a long, happy life. But you will die at the end of it. Right. That's right. That's right. You will die at the By end the way, of your there's, life. There's stories in the news all the time about, you know, the lady who's 103 years old and she says her secret is that she has a little shot of whiskey every night before right, she goes to bed. Yeah. Like You always are hearing stories like that. So the point is, I mean, for God's sake. William Shatner you know is what, 90. He's you know outlived most of the people on Star Trek, and he's the one that's like, you know, you know, he, he's shaped like me. You know, he's he's not Mr. <laughs> like, I'm doing CrossFit and running a marathon every day. You know what's also bad for you? Idiocy. Thank you. Thank like, you. let's have a study and let's make the government pay for how much idiocy affects your life. Yeah. I think I have a hard time finding volunteers for that one, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe the people standing next to the people who are wearing the I'm with stupid shirt should just <laughs> automatically be in yeah. the uh, in the uh, In my mind, I see that test. shirt on everybody. Come yeah. with us. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, the reality, the reality uh, Ian, is that, you know, uh, this, this, is not a, this is not a difficult thing. Uh, enjoy things that you enjoy in moderation. Try not to go crazy try to put balance balance is nobody ever talks about balance you know the right talks about this and the left talks about that nobody ever talks about how can we find a good balance to these things let's talk about balance with drinking for a moment okay yeah when's the last time you sat at your house and you had a cigar and a couple whiskeys in one evening and you woke up and felt absolutely horrible the next day i i don't think i've had a time like okay that. cricket so, noise yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, do you have crickets in the uh, center? <laughs> exactly. Right? I don't, I don't have crickets totally should. Any. Cicadas, so, maybe. So there, here's a thought to consider. Now, when's the last time you drank way too much and smoked like five cigars in a night and woke up feeling a little bad? Uh, that's happened. That's yeah. happened. That's happened. That's your body yeah. telling you something. Right. Yeah. Thank you. You know? Mm -hmm. So what's the right thing to do? Well, I mean, did you have fun drinking way too much and having five cigars? Maybe there's a balance there, too. Hey. I got a hangover. I get over it. I feel better about my weekend. My whole next week, I feel fine about. Right, and I and I won't have. And there's your mental and wellness. I won't do too. that again tomorrow night. You know, that's the, again. It's about finding balance, and I just think we've turned in this to into this society that wants to find terror everywhere. Wants it has to find to. outrage everywhere. It has to. You know? I'm outraged because there's nothing that we're not left balanced. to be outraged about. So right. now I have to be outraged by the fact that you're not outraged about stuff. <laughs> there you go. So yeah. that's that's yeah. the society. And if you don't agree with me, cancel culture, buddy. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm just waiting to be canceled. I, <laughs> yeah. figure, I feel like I've got a big target on my back. Cancel they haven't me. done it to us yet. Remember, remember back in the old days, uh, people used to put kick me signs on people's backs? Yeah, yeah. Now they put cancel me signs on people's backs. That's <laughs> what go. they do. That's what That's they do. Sign of the times. All right. Well, look, just balance, okay? We're going we're gonna to balance today. We're going to balance some great spirits from Beam Centauri with some beers. There's balance for you.
it's it's harder to balance them the more you drink them. By the way, that is true. I will I will agree with you. For on those that. of you just listening, yeah, I held so. my finger up as if I was balancing the bottle <laughs> on my finger. So, uh, Ian, it's been a balanced week for you, I'm sure. Have you had an opportunity to smoke uh, anything interesting this week, sir? I have. I went by You're good like that, by De Monte way. Cristo this morning. Ah. These guys are always so nice over there. And one of the gentlemen said, hey, have you tried the new Romeo Iulieta Eternal yet? Oh, I've heard and of I it. And I said, I have not tried it yet. He said, here you go. Ah. So I purchased one, and I walked back to the lounge, and I sat down to sit down and do an uh, earnest review on this. Mm-hmm. Um this is a 6x54 Toro, uh, Nicaragua Puro, meaning nice. the wrapper, binder, and mm-hmm. yep. uh, filler all, the tobacco are all Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan yep. from different uh, areas around there. Made, this is made by Placencia okay. for Romeo and Julieta, and Placencia makes amazing cigars. Yes, so, they do. Like, as soon as you say that, I know the quality is going to be fantastic to start with. Like That's my mental expectation at all times when you say that. Uh, the bar's set pretty high, in other words. Yes. The appearance on this, medium brown, super smooth on the outside with some underlying veins, very firm feel, little oily wrapper, uh, has the uh, Eternal uh, band on it and a little red footer. Uh, really nice looking cigar. If you look in the picture, mm, you'll see yeah. what I'm talking oh, about. Yeah, gorgeous. The uh, pre-light sniff on this, barnyard, earth, leather, a little fermented hay, cinnamon and spices at the foot of the cigar. The pre-light draw, I used a clip. It was an effortless draw. Sweet baking spices and graham cracker and tea leaf kind of came through in that uh, pre-light draw. The initial light, spicy white pepper. Not a big blast of black pepper like you expect from a uh, from a Nicaraguan Puro, but mm-hmm. a spicy white pepper. Um, uh, uh, creamy, sweet undertone overall. The retro hails black pepper and sweet tea. Wow. The uh, first third of this, the pepper settles into a tangy, salty spice surrounded by sweet coffee. Hints of mocha and poppy seed retrohale is peppery and sweet. Solid ash, perfect burn. I can't mm-hmm. tell you how perfect the burn was. On awesome. It. The second third of this cigar, white pepper present in the back of the palate. Pastry sweetness has kind of developed. Sweet coffee, that salty tang was still in there. I really enjoyed the uh, hints of toffee and mocha kind of surrounded by oak and cedar notes. Underlying graham cracker crust kind of flavors going on. Uh, Solid ash, perfect burn. This is sounding really good so far. It does. The last third of the cigar, developing a distinctive nuttiness. Graham cracker kind of moves towards roasted coffee bean. They kind of just kind of like morphed into it. It was really interesting the way it happened. Salty tang swirls around the palate with an underlying pastry sweetness. Big woody notes of oak and cedar play around with the pepper. And this was getting more oaky and cedary towards the end. <laughs> I'm going to buy one of these on my way home at this point. <laughs> yeah, this is Solid ash, great. perfect burn, okay? Yeah, but so what would you think about it? All that being said, <laughs> yeah, it's a $15 cigar. Well, yeah, wow. see, so it better perform like that. Okay, I gave it a six. Well, that's good. See, and I had an expensive cigar last week that I gave uh, a higher than five rating to, and I just want to point out that's that's high praise. This cigar was exactly what I want. Uh, amazing burn, uh, complex flavors, exactly what I want in a super premium cigar. Mm-hmm. If I paid twenty dollars for this, I would have not have bat- batted an eye. Well, it would see, have been there you go. An easy five, even at twenty dollars. Uh, I truly enjoyed this cigar. So, at a six. Our uh, price to quality scale that's that's punching above its weight class. We right. uh, five means you get exactly what you pay for. Yeah. If you get below five, it's like it might still be a good cigar, but maybe a little overpriced. If you get above that, that means whatever price you paid, it, it would have been worth more, mm-hmm. or it's it's better than the price you paid. And I give it a solid six on that. Awesome. Buy that's these. Good. They're fifteen dollars each. They're not a lawnmower cigar, no. you know. Yeah. But, man, the, the complexity of flavors, I can't rave about it enough. I was super happy. Love it. That's awesome. Uh, they're really, uh, you know, the uh, the guys at their uh, parent company have really kind of stepped up their game by collaborating with, you know, Placencia and A.J. Fernandez and some of the uh, some of the other companies that are known for being really great boutique blenders and bringing creations of theirs into the you know Monte Cristo line or the uh, Oye de Monterey line or the uh, Romeo and Julieta line, yeah. so it's really cool. And this is not this is this is a medium cigar, medium strength. Yeah. So uh, if you if you like light cigars, light flavored cigars, I would say don't be afraid to try this. Mm-hmm. It's complex enough to keep your attention. It's not 
so peppery that it's distracting and it's got tons of sweetness all the way through it. Awesome. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I'll tell you about the cigar that I smoked this week. I found it very interesting. And we'll begin our tasting. We have some beer to taste. As I mentioned, the Hawaii Five Ale will be uh, up first for us. And, uh, you know, Adam, you can uh, take a look at what you've got and decide where we go first on your uh, tasting list here. So uh, I love seeing that many bottles. That, just, that's, that that's makes fun. me that that makes me happy, to do. you know. And that's that's the other thing that people aren't aren't you know reading into this whole thing about whether things are good for you or bad for you. I just look at those bottles, and I get happy. <laughs> and that's that yeah. happiness is a wonderful thing that is better for your body and spirit than than anything. Like being happy is the greatest thing ever. This is a job that I never wake up in the morning thinking to myself, man, I don't want to go to work today. Oh, damn, I got to go into the studio. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn, we got to take a break. We'll be right back at Smoking and Toasting, show number 234, as we talk about balancing your life and being Suntory Spirits with Adam Harris. We'll be right back. Super excited. Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toasting, the program that is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. It's show number 234. So we are officially halfway to 300. Halfway? Uh, yeah. Um, Math works out. We are brought to you by MyCigarShirts.com. Great shirts for cigar lovers and the people who love them on the web. Ian's wearing one that says you can't hurry up and smoke a cigar. That sounds uh, like something I'd say. A phrase that you've heard before if you've been here on the show. And uh, and so they have uh, they have great stuff, and the shirts are, are awesome and soft and, and will last, too. And yeah, it's a super 20 comfy bucks. shirt. MyCigarShirts.com because... Cigars. Yes, sir. Uh, so... Um, before we uh, get into a little bit of tasting, I wanted to tell you about the cigar that I uh, decided to smoke for the show. It's funny. Now I get to tell my wife, I have to smoke a cigar. It's for the show, you know, which is awesome. <laughs> Not that she, she doesn't give me a hard time about cigars, but uh, no, my ex, different story. But that's the, that's, that's why a story. she's ex. That's a story we'll tell at another time. Um, no, I had, I had a cigar uh, for the show today that I, I really, I loved the name. That was actually what drew me to it. It was the CAO Nicaragua Tippy Tapa. Oh, I haven't seen that before. So the Tippy Tapa is actually a size. So there's the CAO Nicaragua line, uh -huh. which has, I think, three different sizes. And they call this one the Robusto, although, to be honest, it looked a little more like a Toro to me. It was a longer uh -huh. uh, Robusto. But the name of it officially is the CAO Nicaragua Tippy Tapa. So I thought that sounds like something I would like. So, uh, so I bought one, and when I bought it, I assumed that this was like what you just described—a Nicaraguan puro. Uh, after all, it's named Nicaragua, so you're thinking, okay, this is their uh, all Nicaraguan tobacco. Actually, that's not correct. In fact, the wrapper and the binder are both Honduran, uh, but the cigar does feature Nicaraguan fillers, and it was rolled in Nicaragua. Okay. So at least it's got some kind of connection. But I thought it was. Yeah. That's a little weird. I don't naming, want to say but deceptive, but maybe yeah, maybe a little. Maybe odd. it's meant to meant to be like a, a Nicaragua flavor. Well, and if you think about Cao, they've got several different sort of lines. Mm -hmm. They have their line that's all named after like gearhead stuff for motorcycle mm -hmm. enthusiasts. They've got uh, the line that's the named flat after head line, I think right the flathead line, right? And they've got the line that's named after different locations. They've got the Brasilia, Brasilia the, and the Italia, uh -huh. and so now the Nicaragua. So it's it's part of uh, that line. So uh, I checked the cigar out. It looked really nice. The pre-light aromas on the Nicaragua were quite a bit different from my usual experience with Nicaraguan cigars. There was no earth or deep pepper on the uh, on the pre-light aroma. Just from a picture, that is a beautiful oily it is, wrapper. It is a very nice looking cigar. Uh, it had a distinct grassy note and something else, maybe citrus. I wasn't quite sure. Uh, reminded me. Of the pre-light draw on a Grand Habano cigar, very grassy oh, yeah. and barnyard uh, sort of a vibe to it. So I used a punch and I lit the cigar, and then there was no initial blast of Nicaraguan pepper. In fact, I got no pepper at all. Huh? When I, yeah, I know. I, I was that's ex that was exactly my response. Uh, exactly. Uh, there was some nuttiness, a little bit of leather, and some with citrus with a distinct yeah, and just. Press any button at random. It doesn't Perfect. really matter. Uh, uh, but there was, uh, like I said, nuttiness, leather, and citrus, a distinct 
uh, cedar note kind of right at the center. Uh -huh. So very different from what I was expecting from a cigar that says Nicaragua right, on the band, right? right? Um, the burn started out great, hit a little snag about a half, maybe quarter to a half inch in, but then straightened out all by itself. I didn't touch it up. Uh, so good marks for the construction. Yep. I think it just hit a little soft point, but it evened out beautifully. Nice draw, plenty of smoke. The cigar opened up a little from the flavor standpoint by the second third. I started to get this nice creaminess that kept the cigar fairly mellow and a note of baked bread uh, emerged that dominated for a good while. Have you ever driven by like the Sunbeam Bakery or oh, the Buttercrust Bakery with, with your windows down yeah. when they're making the bread? That aroma. Yeah. That's what I was getting. And it's awesome. It's it's great. Like, it smells oh, yeah. so good. Yeah. That whole intersection oh, yeah, in Houston great. smells it's so great. good. If you're going by there, make sure to put your windows yeah. down because you want to enjoy that. Uh, anyway, that's the kind of flavor I was getting. Somewhere during the second, third, I went ahead and uh, tapped the ash to let it fall because I was really – Afraid of an Ian shirt kind of incident <laughs> happening. Right. It, it looked great, but I was just I just felt like I was pressing my luck. So burn stayed straight, and the flavors kicked up a little bit. Maybe it was burning a little bit hotter once it lost the longer uh, uh, ash. It was about an inch or so long. Uh, as it worked its way into the final third, I finally got a little bit of pepper on the retro hail. Was the first really note wow. of pepper that I got out of this thing. The cedar wood note returned kind of to the center, although the baked bread still hung in there, and it stayed creamy. Creamy, even with the pepper coming through uh, a little bit. I'll be honest, I've actually smoked one of these before. And when I did, I was really not that impressed with it. But this one offered me some pretty interesting flavors. Maybe I was just in a better place. That's the other thing, too. It's like sometimes, like, where your head is at yeah. when you're smoking can have a can have a big... So I actually kind of sat back with this one, and I really did uh, enjoy it. Um, it was... Interesting flavor. It's a nice medium body. So if you're looking for a big, spicy Nicaraguan cigar, smoke the one that Ian talked about, not this one. Because this this is definitely not it, even though it's named Nicaragua. Uh, that said, pleasant smoke. Maybe a good on-ramp for somebody that wants to try Nicaraguan tobacco and, and taste it, but is a little afraid of that you know, pepper the, blast the peppery spice, yeah, yeah. from some of the bigger uh, Nicaraguans. I would have preferred more pepper, but that's just that's just my palate, you know? Uh, in the tippy top of size, which they call a Robusto, but look more like a Toro to me, the CAO Nicaragua is about a $7 cigar. And at that price point, I give it a five, price to quality. You know? He's catching and, on. Yep, <laughs> that's very good. You're, <laughs> you actually, like... It took Ian maybe like, I don't know, three, four, five shows to ever get the right sound effect <laughs> that he was going for. And you got it right there. I, I was so just that, waiting in the wings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I recommend this, maybe not for serious Nicaraguan uh, tobacco lovers, but uh, for anybody else. Or if you want to change something a little different. So the CAO, the CAO Nicaragua, Nicaragua. Inappropriately named, inappropriately named size. Yes. But good cigar. But good cigar. Yeah. 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 Enjoyable enough. So uh, so that's, uh, that's my report. And I'm sticking to it. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. 234 is here. And uh, Adam Harris, the Bourbon Vivant from Beam Centauri, is uh, in the studio. Uh, now, Beam Centauri, that means something to Ian and myself because we you know, spend time you know, dealing with spirits and doing stuff a lot. But what is Beam Centauri as a company? Like To somebody who doesn't even know what that means, what is Beam Centauri? What is Beam Centauri? It's a great question, and uh, thanks for having me back before we get into Thank this. Thank you for being here. Um, Beam Centauri is really a... a we're a relatively startup company, you know, that has about 225 and 80 years of history behind both of our families. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, so, yeah. on my yeah. way here, just a newbie. On yeah. my way here, my wife said, "Beam Suntory, what are they going to bring?" I was like, "Well, I don't know. There's <laughs> yeah. a lot under that umbrella. Yeah. Yeah, There's a good chance kidding. it could be whiskey, though. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Well, I, I had figure, I had a feeling if you're the Bourbon Vivant that we knew it was going to probably be headed in that direction. Yeah, but, that's right. But yeah, you guys uh, represent and distribute. Uh, a number of different spirits, right? Certainly. I mean, we kind of go full portfolio around the world. You know, mm -hmm. when you think about our, our, our right hook, as I like to say, is, is really whiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, being Beam and being Suntory with the Tory family, of course, we've got our strengths, which are American whiskey and Japanese whiskey. And then we kind of fill all the gaps in between, between Canada, Ireland, Scotland. But then we get out of that category. What do they know about whiskey in Scotland? Really, not, not much. Really, you know, <laughs> not, not much. Uh, <laughs> they'll tell you how much they know about yeah, it. Though. So will the Irish, by the way. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, and then when you go outside of the whiskey category, we've got tequila. If that scratches your itch, rum, cognac, oh. gin, vodka. 
Uh, I'm sure there, I'm missing something there. Rum. Many itch, many itches being scratched. That's yes. right. Yeah, we touch them all. Yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, so your job specifically though is dealing more with the whiskey side of things. Is that that's right? That's correct. Yeah, for my 15 year career, I've been talking about bourbon, okay. uh, one way or another, from either of our distilleries, whether that's the Maker's Mark Distillery in Loretto, uh, where I kind of cut my teeth, or if it's been with the the Jim Beam Distillery in Claremont, where I've been uh, concentrating most of my my recent and uh, my recent past on, I suppose. So, mm-hmm. cool. uh, what we have today is going to be our Legion Bourbon, which is uh, relatively new. Uh, Texas is one of the first launch markets we had in 2019, and then last year was a bit of a wash for a lot of Did things. We changed the know. bottle on these. Would you like to change the bottle on? Did it? we? No, I, 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 I seem to, I had a bottle. Do you have a crystal ball? I had, I had a bottle of this. And is, I seem to remember the, the bottle. Is the bottle going to wider. be changing? Did Ian touch on was something? It, yeah, was it changed? Well, uh, or is it the same? And I'm just making it up. Now, now you're kind of scaring me because I, I don't want to lie in case you can see the future. <laughs> so uh, I will tell you that we are going to get a little bit of a facelift, not ah. on bottle shape or size, but on label, just to where you can okay. see some of the marks on it a little bit easier. And that's going to roll out. Um, I'm sure someone's going to be upset with me for letting this cat out of the cat out of the bag, but uh, come you, late summer, I think you'll you wouldn't see be the things. first person who's gotten in trouble for letting something out of the bag on this show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Can we just make it all so that so that everything shows up under black light? Yeah, yeah, that'd be, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. <laughs> so you you said, that, and I actually didn't realize you'd only had this brand on the market since 2019. Yeah, I think I thought it went back a little further than that. So that's I, really I seem to remember. Um, when we saw Frank at the Houston Whiskey Social that year, that mm-hmm. this was a new thing. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Um, I probably had a lot of whiskey. I think it was you were being very social. Yes, I was yeah. being very social. Yes, and 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 may not have remembered <laughs> this uh, specific. Fact. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm, I'm interrupting here. <laughs> but uh, but no, this is uh, but this is something that's really only a, a few years old as a brand. Correct. Right. It was the it was the first new brand to come from Beam Centauri, and it was the first time that we at the distillery in Claremont had actually created and launched a completely new brand outside of innovation or line extension in over 25 years. And oh, wow. Fred No is the guy that uh, that put this put this blend together, correct? Yeah, so I, you know, it's I think it's kind of funny or coincidental how you guys were talking about collaboration earlier with uh, mm-hmm. the cigar company working with some other suppliers and things like that to bring right. some new things to life and so this is really a collaboration between our two legends when you look at the names on the door right. between Beam and of course that's Fred No, our seventh generation master distiller down there, Jim Beam's great grandson, Booker No's son, mm-hmm. all that kind of thing, you know, all that amazing history and know-how through the generations and then uh, w- his partner in crime on this particular collaboration is going to be Shinji Fukuyo who's the fifth ever chief blender from the House of Suntory. Okay. okay. So what this bourbon is is really a, it's an announcement of who we are as Beam Suntory. This this project started a long time ago when we became this startup as I mentioned but uh, started coming to light about three, four years ago as we began to start to think what this liquid would finally taste like and then putting it in the bottle and getting it out to market back in 2019. How has the market for bringing something new out changed between 2019 and 2021? There are certainly Hmm. a lot more brands out there. Yes. But how is that? Did you have any advantage, I guess, uh, with the fact that it rolled out several years ago as opposed to if you were just rolling it out now? Yeah, I, I think that had we tried to pull this off last year in the in the world of lockdown during the, the harsher part of yeah. the pandemic, I think that we would have had uh, nowhere near the luck that we had in 2019. And we only launched in about 10 markets in the first year. And we wanted to really kind of see how it would resonate with uh, bourbon enthusiasts and then also uh, bartenders and people in the, in the, the bar and on-premise world. So we wanted to see if we'd have any sort of... Uh, uh, what kind of uh, gravity the product mm-hmm. had. Right, right. And luckily we did. And now this year, starting kind of at the end of last year, we've been launching slowly across the country uh, for a full release. And so it, I think seeding it was really important because, again, you know, going off and doing something completely different uh, and, and doing something new and unique, we really wanted to make sure that the story had connectivity and that people gravitated towards it. And, and of course, we wanted to make sure that people liked the whiskey. Right. That was the most important part. How important is the bartender part of it, getting bartenders to kind of buy in and recommend? I, I have a feeling yeah. people may not realize what a big deal that that's is. That's got to be such a thing. huge introductory market. Like right. When a bartender says, hey, I recommend this. That's right. Like yeah. You'll start remembering that as well, a consumer. Uh, you know, our good friend Docs, who uh, works for the uh, uh, Pierron Company and Pierre Plantation Ferran, Rum, yeah. uh, I mean, they've sold cases of the pineapple rum 
because a bartender oh, yeah. rep- recommended it to my wife one yeah, day. Yeah. Yep. She never had it before. She was on a girls' night, and uh, she mentioned that she liked rum. And the bartender said, "Have you tried this?" And uh, you know, recommended that she try a shot of it, and it became her favorite. Mm-hmm. And we are never without it at our house now. Yep. And so something like that from a bartender can really be. But you're also really competing. With a lot of products for that bartender's attention. That's right? right, and that's why you've got to rely on the the quality of your product. You know, we can we can tell a true story, and that true story can be great, and we can put all the bells and whistles behind it and offer support. But if you don't like it as a bartender, during, at the end of the day, you're not going to recommend it. If you're mm-hmm. not comfortable working with it, if you're not you know comfortable within your own morality to 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 genuinely recommend it, then it's just not going to fly. Well, bartender is a salesperson, and we sell what we like as a. It, but, yeah. a salesperson. But, yeah, I, but, I, right. but I think most bartenders, at least the ones that I know, and I know a few bartenders, uh, <laughs> but I, I think that most of the ones that I know are, are, are just not the type that would recommend something if they didn't buy into it themselves. Right. Correct. You know, um, they might recommend something if you say you like something else that isn't one of their favorites or whatever. They might steer you in the direction they think that you're wanting to go. But if they're going to say, have you tried this? And like really give you a, a path to something new, I think it has a tendency, I don't know, most of the ones that I know are pretty pretty straightforward. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I, I've always thought that was an interesting thing. No, I think well, when you look at sales and people that kind of focus more on sales, you're thinking about cases and bottles. But right. people like myself that tend to think more about the product and how it relates to the people that are going to use it, we, we tend to think about more in terms of drinks, right? Right. And so, getting that drink recommendation is an incredibly important part of the process of Growing a brand or maintaining a brand. Speaking of drinks, yes, of yes. Drinks. So why don't we uh, why don't we do some sampling? Here? Absolutely. So, Where do you want to start us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I we were talking about complex layering of flavors and things, mm-hmm. right? And and so we have this cool collaboration with Fred and Shinji, relying on the know how of what they both do. And we've tasted bourbon before together. I see and what we you talk did about there. Know how? Uh-huh. I see what you did uh-huh. there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we I have... want to see you work Suntory in the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best. I'll do okay. my best. So. What I wanted to do is bring something a little bit complex, and mm-hmm. uh, and it all lives in this one bottle, but I like to do something special for you guys when I get to stop by, when I have the privilege and pleasure, and so I thought I'd bring the component whiskey again of uh-huh. what we put in this blend. Okay. So kind of like what we did with Little Book last time, and we broke down two chapters of Little Book last time, and that was a lot of whiskey. Okay. But uh, we're going to taste the three major bourbons that go into Legion. Okay. And then we'll try the finished product. Okay, Does that so, sound cool? So let's try the first one in this segment. And and straightening this up for listeners, I mean, you guys have a lot of whiskey at your fingertips yes. at your distillery. So this is not a brand new mash bill, right. so to speak. This is a blend of whiskeys that you make, and and they're blended to create flavors, much like, uh, like if you go buy a... Uh, you know, you have a grocery list, and you want to blend your spaghetti sauce to make a certain flavor, mm-hmm. much like that. Right, so, right. so when we say it's blended whiskey, we're not meaning you know, uh, we're not meaning blended from a bunch of random different things. Correct. Right. Yes. Yeah. So these is, are all straight bourbons. It's That's like, correct. Look, the the recipes that a chef puts together. Are blended. Yes. He's putting different ingredients right. in to achieve a specific thing, and that's what the blenders are doing in this case as well. They're that's right. Going for something specific by combining certain things. And I think we spent quite a bit of time last time talking about the the dirty word blend, right? When we right. think about a a true spirit that is then blended with a uh, grain neutral spirit, right? right. To kind of create that whiskey flavored vodka sort of thing. Right. right. But right, now, right. a few years later, we, everybody understands what it means to blend straight whiskeys together right. because of what Little Book had offered and now what Legion's offering and things like that. So we don't even have to explain that part of it anymore. So, we can just go right into enjoying so what this, we got. Yeah, this is the first of the bourbons that yes. become part of Legion. And what is this one specifically? So this will all be a bourbon. Legion is a bourbon through and through, even with the Japanese influence at the end with blending. So the base of Legion is going to be an extra-aged Kentucky Straight Bourbon whiskey aged and created in Claremont by Fred. Uh, this particular one that we're going to set as the base, we're going to taste all these this blends at cinnamon-y. cast strength. Okay. Because um, I like y'all so much. And so this is a— <laughs> We like you too, Adam. <laughs> a five-year-old bourbon. It's no less than five years old when we dump the barrels together for this particular part of the blend. It's going to be 121.8 proof. And this is really just to kind of get that nice— uh, just get that perspective again on what a true bourbon should taste like. Right. Ian, I think you went first. So on the nose, this is a cinnamon bomb. Mm-hmm. Right. Like right up to the nose. It's absolute cinnamon uh, with a hint of vanilla and a little kind of underlying chocolatey kind of thing going on. 
Um, on the palate, I just took color. my first sip, and my initial response, especially around the outside of the palate, is a little bit of cinnamon burn that I really like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and a sweetness that's really, really nice, not overpowering or cloying, but really, really nice, fresh sweetness to it. I will just mention that the whiskey hug on this starts with your first sip and just kind of keeps going. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You don't have to wait for it at all. Yep. Uh, nor does it start and go away. It stays with you for a little <laughs> no, while. No, this one, this one's yeah. present the yeah, entire yeah, time. Yeah, for it, sure. This is... Really interesting. The, the the very aftertaste and and uh, retro hail on this are so like like chocolate cake. Yeah. Like cake batter kind of thing mm-hmm. with some cinnamon going. It's really interesting. There's a real cinnamon presence for sure, which you do find in a cinnamon. lot of bourbon. But yeah. but it's 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 pretty uh, prominent. No, here. this this is a hit you over the head with a cinnamon stick kind right, of cinnamon right. Which I like, by the way. I think that's a, I think it's one of the more pleasant flavors. Uh, in bourbon and is, is that I'm waiting for him to say no actually that's dandelion <laughs> no, no, you're absolutely right and it's that authentic cinnamon stick too right it's yeah, not yeah. going to the baking right. it's not going to the the baking shelf and pulling out the powdered cinnamon it is that true right. it's, yeah, it's yeah, like cinnamon stick, stick. Right. Exactly. Like, like you might have in a hot toddy or whatever yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. exactly but i yeah. do think too once you kind of dig past that cinnamon note and both the aroma and the flavor the sweet that just keeps delivering mm-hmm. and developing is really really nice Mm-hmm. And again, you're getting this at cast strength unfiltered. So the way that it, it would be kind of the way it represents in the bottle wouldn't necessarily be this potent. It's, right? it's, it's really strong. interesting, sure. too, because this is not like a big um, whiskey with a lot of oil in it either. So it's not lingering uh, around. the. It's not lingering and, and really spreading across the palate in such a right. cloying no, way. Right. It's yeah. more direct. It's very direct, and you're right. The whiskey hug is there from the beginning to the end, but it's not distracting to the flavors. No. It's 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 part of what it's all about, yeah. actually. Yeah. I would, I would now, drink this now this right. isn't something that people can go and buy individually on its own, right? No, this is just for conversational purposes. <clears throat> right. So this is part of where the blend comes from, and we'll be trying more of those parts of the blend. And we got a uh, beer, which we'll get to in the next segment. So thank you for joining us for show number 234 of Smokin' and Toastin' uh, with Adam from Beam Suntory in the studio as we deconstruct legend. I love that sound. Welcome back. It is Smoking and Toasting. This show is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. Ian, you had a uh, Placencia cigar that you uh, talked about. or, or, or Made by Placencia. Made by Placencia, yes. right. Placencia is doing something revolutionary. They are going to embed a smart chip technology in their cigar bands. This is uh, all happening with a new distinctly pressed smoke uh, that Placencia is uh, is offering called the Alma Fuerte Six Toe. It's the Colorado Claro. Now, you've had the Al- Alma Fuerte before. I love the yeah, Alma Fuerte. And that's, and that's that good stuff. So, good. Uh, so now they're, they're putting a, uh, embedding the bits of a, uh, of a chip inside the band so that you scan it with your phone. If you have the app on your phone, it like will scan it automatically, and it'll give you details and information. Need one more. Oh, sorry, um, yeah. Details and information on the, um, you know, on the history of the cigar, where the tobacco comes from, all this stuff. Just boom, right there on your phone, which is a pretty, pretty interesting thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So they're the first to do this. Placencia cigars. If you are a fan of the Alma Fuerte, the Six Toe Colorado Claro will be the one that has uh, this technology in, and that's a great cigar, by the way. It is. I think we've both. Um, talked about that cigar on the show before. Yes. So, so good stuff. All right. Tell me about this beer, Ian. This is the Hawaii Five Ale. I'm just smelling it, and it smells funky. Yeah. And I. It, oh, it really it's, does. It's on the borderline between a good funky and a funky and weird a funky, funky funky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know what's going on with it. You know? It could be the influence of the uh, whiskey as well, because the whiskey's probably. Let me let me get my other beer palate cleanser. Okay. Here. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, I like fruit funky more than farmhouse funky, and so I think this does still kind of teeter on, teeter towards it's, the it's fruity funky. Teetering between two, and I like both funkies, but this has a weird. Mm-hmm. But you, man, you can smell like pineapple in there for days. As easily. I believe we have stated on the show before, and we do want the funk. <laughs> you yeah. gotta have the funk. <laughs> yeah. Um, so ordinarily, it's something that goes over pretty well here. Now we're tasting. So, Ian, does it uh, does it deliver on the funk? The flavor is different than the nose. 
It sure is. And it's actually quite delightful. It's sweeter uh, than, you know, you you are, from the nose, you are sort of being promised Have you ever had a, this a, danker, funkier thing. Yeah. Have you ever and had it's a, not a, that at all on like the Like pineapple ballot. juice with a little carbonation in it. Yes. Like, Delicious. There's, there's drinks that are like that's mm -hmm. quite good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but pineapple juice can be real sweet because I think they add just a ton of sugar to it. Mm -hmm. time. This has less of that sweetness, but it has that same vibe. I can get behind this. It's actually really delicious. You can you can get the pineapple. I'm kind of, now that I'm now that my nose has been in it a little bit, and I think I've cleared my palate a little bit with it. Uh, You're not getting the funk so much. The funk is not as present in it, but the initial, like right out of the can. On the palate, it's not funky at all. Like, it's just mm -hmm. kind fruity. of straightforward, fruity, refreshing. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I can totally get behind this now that, I've tried, so now that I've tried it. It's a blonde ale, pineapple, coconut, mango, peach, and guava. Our fruity and juicy blonde ale will quickly transport your palate with a taste of paradise. Tropical flavors of pineapple, coconut, mango, peach, and guava are balanced by uh, smooth maltiness. Smooth. Smooth. The uh, one sip and you'll be singing the song of the island. Aloha. A lot of nectar from that yes. guava and peach mm -hmm. kind of happening in the, yeah, the guava, beginning finish. The guava doesn't really add the flavor of the guava, I think, though, but it does add that kind of nectary texture yeah. to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. as weird as that may sound, because guava no, is usually mind it. pretty, pretty uh, kinda, prominent flavor. I kind of yeah. dig this. This would be a great summer beer if you wanted something that was... You know, drinkable and and that you could have you know by the pool or out doing a barbecue, oh, yeah. but you didn't want to give up flavor to do. I it, want you know? this in one of those big glass things where you go up and just pull the spout and pour <laughs> yeah. yourself on. That's what it kind of tastes like. Yeah, too. yeah. Like I, a, I I really like this. That's what's what they call they call that a rich man's keg. That's what they call that. <laughs> <laughs> so no, this is really good. Um, distill is uh, they're out of Normal, Illinois. Anything else on the can? That we uh, it know says about? support flavor boycott bland. Six point four percent alcohol. That's a little surprising because it's uh, like it's it's not very detectable in there. No, I was going to say it comes across as very crushable. So I was about to say it's a session beer with a little kick. I guess yeah. with that proof. Mm. Oh, I really like this. Thumbs up for this. Yeah. This is a this is a great Still one. And I, I didn't know. Here. I liked I liked the idea when uh, when I looked at the can, but I didn't know how this one would. would come you know, out. Uh, so when you mentioned what it was initially, I thought that's a really busy blonde ale. Yeah. But it comes across really nice. The peach is something that kind of happens after you let it linger a uh -huh. little bit on it's your palate. It's on the finish. Yeah, you're right. But if you think about it, a good fruit punch can have all kinds of fruits in it. Yeah. It's just a matter of are they the right ones that go together, right? Don't even get me started because I have a whole <laughs> I have a lot of questions about what fruit punch is and what fruit punch tastes oh. like and if you can if you can actually identify the flavor of fruit punch because of fruit punch. I could just be anything. call fruit punch flavor. I, I, I just call it red. Red. I, I yes. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know we would touch a nerve with the fruit punch thing, but I love that. I love that that happened. Okay, this is one of our short segments, so we're going to uh, take a quick break. I did want to mention that Bruce uh, Stark uh, on Stark in our comments was asking if we had tried McAuliffe cigars, and yes, I, I oh. have. An I know yeah, you have too. Yeah, I love they, make, they make some great cigars, some great yep. smokes. So we need to get Brandon uh, back on at some yes. point in time. Uh, thumbs up and highly that recommend. It. Is real Speaking good. of which, by the way, and I'll just mention this as we go to break. Um, you're going to be doing the show remotely next week, aren't you? I I'm I'm out next week. And I'll actually get what they call a chance to talk. Yeah, it's, right. it's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Well, actually, to be honest, Ian, I don't know if you will. Because your buddy Alan Denny is coming on to co-host the show with you, oh, and yeah, I don't know right. how much of a chance to talk you're going to actually get, my friend. Uh, so you may have to. Well, uh, we've got some. Oh, we've got some fun guests lined up for that show and everything. Yeah. Oh, so. well, it's be, so, but you're going to be doing that on. It's going to be our first. On location. Uh, and I hate that I'm missing it. It's going to be our first on location show since the pandemic. That's right, in over so, a year. Yeah, wow. so that that will be exciting. So you'll be at uh, we'll be at Casa, at de, Casa de, de Monte Cristo. Steve over there this morning. And, yep. we're... and so you're you're set to go, mm -hmm. and uh, and so uh, this will be, folks. You have to tune in for the show next week because I have to hear what the Alan Denny, Ian Barry duo is going to sound like. That's I will right. be I will definitely be listening and watching the show. Uh, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, but it sounds like it's going to be a great one. You've got got some great guests lined up and uh, and you'll be on location and smoking. So that'll yes. be fun. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. We have more uh, of the ingredients, more of the blends that go into making legend. Uh, we'll be tasting those coming up plus a little bit of Elvis juice is in our future. Oh. Ooh. Welcome back. 
Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toasting. I always look forward to Thursdays so much. I love doing the show. It's just like, it's it's like the high point of my week. I think. I love you know, it. Um, it, it's funny because before we started <laughs> doing this show, <clears throat> excuse me, I could count the times in a year mm-hmm. uh, on one hand or less than one hand, even almost. Uh, that I would actually, you know, have any kind of spirits or alcohol before, say, like five o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, we're all about day drinking. I almost here. never. Yeah. Almost we're all never about now day I have drinking. one day a week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> like just, clockwork. That's what happens. <laughs> you know, you're gonna have a nap on Thursdays. Yeah. Well, and I had, yeah. yeah, and I had lots of friends that would all like, "Hey, we're day drinking." I just, uh, yeah, you know. But now I think I've gotten the knack of it. In the early days of the show, I used to uh, plan that once we were done, and we're usually done, you know, mid afternoon. Uh, that I would have a little more time to work before the evening, uh, you know, was upon us, and I could knock off and take the rest of the day. Those were the early, young, naive years uh, <laughs> yes. when I uh, uh, w- before I realized that now nah, you know what I need to kind of clear out Thursday yeah, afternoon. Thursday yeah, Thursday is an open schedule yeah. for me afterwards. <laughs> you know what we need to do though? We need to make sure that we make a few of these Thursdays happen with a cigar afterwards. Well, yes, and and you know before the pandemic we would do that from time to time where you and I would just go out yep. and uh, you know hang out and smoke and enjoy. But uh, it, you know it's been, just been a little harder to do. Uh, of late, we'll 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 get there for I've sure. I've been curious to see what the effect of people that enjoy cigars or smoke cigarettes, what the what the business trends have been on smokables since the well, pandemic began. I do know that cigar shipments to the U.S. are up from all of the cigar that producing surprise uh, companies. So it would indicate that people have actually smoked more cigars during oh, the man. pandemic. When we first got locked down, I destroyed my humidor. I was like, I'm at <laughs> I home. Believe it. I believe what the it. hell else I got to do? Exactly. There were a lot of humidors yeah. getting cleared out. There was a lot of whiskey collections out of being drank. You know, Absolutely. all that was just going down. We were down. talking about that before the show, about you know draining the the bottles we had yeah, that only yeah, had yeah. a little in yeah. them. What'd you call the nubbins? The nubbins. The nubbins. The nubbins. I, like nubbins. Yeah. I like it. Speaking of cigars, by the way, a few new cigars to watch for uh, in celebration of his 60th, 60th birthday, which took place in February. Rocky Patel is releasing a new line of cigars that he says have been aged for two years. They are aptly named Rocky Patel 60. He's got so many nice. cigars with numbers and, you know, decade and 25. and, and Well, that 55 and, you know, was the 55. Oh, so good. Dude. So well, good. these are going to be called 60. They are slated to debut this summer at the PCA Trade Show in Las Vegas, and they'll be available to retailers who attend that convention. So if your favorite cigar shop is going, you'll be able to get the Rocky Patel 60 Last there. week I had a Vintage 92, and I haven't <clears throat> had one in ages. Oh, they're so good. Man, it's so they're good. They're so good, yeah. Uh, 60 is uh, made at Rocky's factory, wrapped in a dark leaf of Mexican San Andres, and the rest of the tobacco is Nicaraguan. So That sounds um, like a I, I am looking forward to that. Ernesto Padilla has released his uh, Padilla 88 Anniversario, Ooh. a new three-size line made in Nicaragua by... Some guy named A.J. Fernandez. That guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we wanted to release it last year, Padilla told uh, Cigar Aficionado, but things got crazy. Uh, the cigars are dark and lightly pressed, made with the core of Nicaraguan tobaccos and cloaked in an Ecuador Havana wrapper. Uh, and they do have some of that uh, Pelo de Oro uh, uh. In, inside them, which we've talked about that before. That's that tobacco that's really hard to grow. Uh, it's very susceptible to disease, but it's really, really delicious when they can uh, pull it off. So I am definitely going to try the 88. That name is also in reference to a birthday, the 88th birthday of uh, Heberto Padilla, Ernesto's father and a famed Cuban poet who actually died in September, but he would have been 88 oh, wow. uh, this uh, this year. So, uh, Tatuaje brand owner Pete Johnson has released a limited batch of older American-made smokes to uh, celebrate a milestone birthday. A lot of birthdays going on in cigar world here. Uh, he shipped 100 boxes each of the older Tatuaje Noelas, Riejos, and J21s from Miami. Each one contains 50 cigars, and each is emblazoned with the number 50 on the lid. They are uh, normal uh, cigars from their production in Miami, he says. The branding and the brands are the same as the 25-count boxes. The difference is that the cigars come from older production. 
and they've been packed in foil paper bundles inside the cabinet of 50. They were aged for just over a year before packing them into the cabinet. So yes. if you're a Tetuahe fan, that is uh, most definitely uh, something to look for. And if you missed the initial winter release of Arturo Fuentes Opus 22 and the Opus X Story Travel Humidor, the remaining batches of both 2020's special edition sets are uh, have already gone out to retailers. Actually, they went out just a couple of days ago. Although the regular production Fuente Fuente Opus X cigars are quite rare, the Opus 22 sampler contains 22 Opus X sizes that are even more esoteric and not a part of the core line. So this is real collector stuff. Yeah, that's not going to yeah. be cheap. My no. problem, yeah, no, of course not. My problem with the collector <laughs> cigars like that, though, is if I buy something that like special and rare, then I, I feel like I I shouldn't like just go to the humidor and grab it and smoke it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the problem yeah. with the cigar is, what's it worth if you don't smoke it? Right. Well, this entire set of twenty-two cigars retails for nine hundred and ninety-five dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's for 22 cigars. Those are expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure. It's about 45 bucks a cigar. <laughs> so that's how the math works out. So anyway, there you go. If anybody's looking, you know, if you've realized that my birthday is in September and you have no plans yet for what you want to get, yes. I just wanted to throw a few things out If you have there. no plans for his birthday or your money yet. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Think how it's been burning a you hole in your pocket that while you haven't been able to go don't shopping. Don't have any plans for yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of people talk about saving money during these last years. Yeah, so, yeah, you that's know, true. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so if you got a little surplus there, yep. the birthday's in September, think about it. That's all I have to say. What if you have a Sir Minus? I think that's what I a have. A Sir Minus, yes. <laughs> a Sir Minus. I have had many Sir Minuses money. over the years. <laughs> I certainly have. Oh, uh, so, uh, that's my, so let's my get... night name in the, in the round table. <laughs> sir, sir Minus. minus. <laughs> well done, sir. <laughs> so, uh, my name is Inigo Montoya. Thank <laughs> you, my father. On. Prepare to die. Stop <laughs> saying that. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, let's go back to the, uh, the ingredients yes. that make up legend. Yes. We tried the first one, Cinnamon Bomb. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, uh, and so now, where are we going second? So, what we're going to do now is we're going to start talking is about it how. Legend or Legion? It's Legion. But, but I do like to give a little leeway because sometimes it's just not okay. the easiest word to say. Legion. Well, well yeah. uh, think legion yep. instead of legend or a legion. Uh, Where does the name come from? Well, you didn't look it up in the dictionary, did you? I didn't. No, because you can't find it. It doesn't exist in the dictionary. I was going to uh, say, I think I <laughs> tried searching it and nothing. So yeah, it's a, we it's a made it up. a Shakespearean inv invention. That's right. See, I love made up words. I do too. I think they're the coolest thing ever. We pulled it it's from the ether. To, it's who, hard to, I've tried making up words and then it? I found out that they actually already existed. I've and created was two words in my life. One yeah. was fedorka, which is any hat worn outside or worn inside. Oh, good. Yeah. I like that. Uh, fedorka. So mostly behind a bar. Yeah, yeah. right, right. And then I've uh, seen that. Yep. And then suxedo, which is a a tuxedo. Cheap, tuxedo. Uh, cheap tuxedo. Cheap tuxedo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, tuxedo. Nice. <laughs> I can see you walking into Al's formal where you guys have any tuxedo? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How much for that tuxedo in the window, right? I <laughs> uh, love it. That's good. See, you, you came prepared today. I this appreciate that. This is vastly different. Oh, yes. So oh, now it we're gonna, sure is. Yep. Now, we're, now we're talking about this some, is some like mineral water and, and some real sort of vanilla, maple vanilla type of flavors. It's got a fruity aromas. kind of thing. Thing to going the, to on. Here. I'm going to lean in on that fruit note. So this is that Ugh. same bourbon, but what we're going to do is we're going to take that, you know, extra aged bourbon that we started with, but now we're going to put it in an X red wine cask. So and this is the same distillate. Same distillate, same bourbon. Just yep. aged differently. Finished. Finished differently. Yep. So we're going to take it at that age profile that we just tried, and we're oh. going to let that finish for one to two full summers this in Kentucky good. in a red wine barrel. Ooh, so we're talking about... This is good. It's... It's got a little bit of a. It's got a little bit of a, a, a unrefined character to it, mm -hmm. um, in, in kind of a good way. So do way. I, by the way. And, yes. and that's you know that's something. It's in I, good company right now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's got a little bit of an unrefined character to it, and it, it does kind of bludgeon you a little bit with that wine cask, but mm -hmm. in the best possible way. Yeah. yeah. Please, this also please does have... bludgeon me with your wine cask. <laughs> This also does have a little more of the oiliness to it that, that really yes. spreads across. Yeah. Well, and, and again, that kind of makes sense if it's been in the wine casks, yep. uh, that you would pick up a little of that. It kind of makes sense that it would, and I'm not saying it doesn't have heat, but it's mellowed a bit from sure. what the uh, from what the first one was. And so this is interesting because mixing these two. You can taste that char 
uh, on this a little of bit the wood? too. Yeah. yeah, that that oaky char kind of and uh, flavor. You're, you're so right, Ian, about the um, about the oiliness because the yeah. first one we mentioned did not have a lot of that oiliness that kind of spreads yeah. across the palate. This one definitely does have it. It's funny too it's, because that mineral delicious. that mineral water kind of smell that I like get on the nose underlying it doesn't really live in the whiskey nope. it's it's something right. in the in the aroma but it's not and this is translating this is why i have so much respect for master blenders because if if it were me i would have tasted this and i'd have gone okay we got it we got yeah. our whiskey <laughs> and yeah, done. we're good we're good thanks bring the yeah. bottles let's let's get this out to the stores this yeah. is it but yet that master blender tasted this and thought i can I can do something with this. It has. I can make something with this. And I think that's a huge conversation that we haven't traditionally had in American whiskey or bourbon because we love our distillers so much. And mm -hmm. for good reason, because we've all kind of come up of an age where the figureheads, the family members, the, the, the legacy folks that are behind these whiskeys are the master distillers and sons and granddaughters and grandsons of master distillers, et right. cetera. It's a family thing exactly. in so many cases. Yeah. But then you go around the world outside of the U.S. and, and everybody's celebrating the blender. And we haven't right. necessarily done. Uh, now we're starting to shine a light on the blender in the U.S. a little bit. Now understanding that Shinji is Japanese, of course, from the House of Suntory. But when you think about what Freddie's done with Little Book, and when you think about what other people are kind of following suit with across the industry now that blending has become this okay category to explore, well, I think that we we I, do have the opportunity to shine a light on the blending process challenge. in the U.S. Please challenge after we try the Legion. Mm -hmm. And we understand what these three components create. Mm -hmm. Can we try each one of us to try and blend these three into a single Ooh. cup? See, I and see how close we can get. Well, I'm sure he would allow us to try, but I have a feeling it won't be close at all. We'll need some water because we we're doing these at cast strength. Because I want you guys knowing how well your palates work. I right, wanted y'all to right. try it at full flavor before we get into the 94 proof bottle. We've managed to make him think our palates work. That's that's. A, oh no, y'all have great. Palates. We've accomplished something here, Ian. <laughs> I love hearing you guys talk about stuff. <laughs> well, this is no, this is really, um, uh, it's a really cool idea. And if you'll allow us to, I'd love to try. It's it's. Uh, I have a feeling. I mean, we don't have. We to won't blend, come like, anywhere close to what's in the to what's in the uh, the bottle. But there, um, I. There are no handcuffs. Have you here, ever tried so. this? I, I have. I have given you my. Have, I've right? given my fair I share. I feel like that's something. Like if you sit around with these three bottles enough, you're going to be like, I kind of have to do that, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, know, you stay awake at night. And you're like, what? Okay, I need to tweak it like this, and then you yeah. get up and you go to the little bottles and you start blending again. Yeah. You know, you you you're sitting on your couch. You've watched the latest available episode of Mare of East Town or whatever you're watching, <laughs> and you're like, oh, what should I do now? Oh yeah, I know. I'll blend some whiskey. Some whiskey. <laughs> I mean, you got to get good at it somehow. Yeah, that's right. And and these blenders, you know, how did they get so? Good I've been at to uh, I've been to pipe tobacco blending events, right? And you came where, up with some tobacco you like. Yes, that you, blended, you get right? some component tobaccos and you blend them to create some of the like similar uh, similar profiles to what you would. What you would buy? I'm a big fan this. of the Judge from the Briar Club. I like oh, the Judge. Yeah. Yeah. See, I get yeah. the accountant there okay. all the yeah. time. The yeah, accountant is also one. good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like that's like that's kind of my go-to. Yeah. I learned how to blend. Uh, the Judge is a little more English, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a little bit. But yeah. I learned how to blend uh, Diet Dr Pepper and Kraken spiced rum. Yes, uh, I got I got really good at that. <laughs> In fact, I got so good at it that uh, I enjoyed it for an entire evening. Um, uh, about two years ago, and I haven't reblended it since. Because <laughs> you perfected one, it. Yeah, that was yes. one of those, as Ian was describing earlier in the uh, show, one of those times when you wake up the next day and you go, okay, I don't need to do that again yeah, for a that, while. That wasn't good yeah, for me. Yeah, uh, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, your boy, body will tell boy, you. Boy, was it easy to drink, I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> so, no, this is, honestly, this is great. And I truly would have thrown my hands up and said, we're done and when, when you got to this because yeah. this, is, this is that good. To me, I lean, I lean in with the fruit notes, as you mentioned. I think that there's a lot of, like, ripe red round fruits. I mm -hmm. get a lot of currants, mm -hmm. you know, something that's got a little tartness to it and that acidity. And that acidity is going to come through in the final blend, which is going to be really, really There's good. a very dry oakiness to that, too, yeah. that, that uh -huh. is, is right Well, like you right said, on. it's got even a little bit of the char. Uh, yeah. That you can almost yeah. detect, which it, it is a very good thing, by the way. It might, and might that's balance, like a negative, right? That's balance to kind balance. of go with the theme from earlier. That's yeah. the theme of the show today. Speaking of balance, how how balanced can you be if your name of your beer is Elvis Juice? 
This is a grapefruit infused IPA, which is probably going to blow an enormous hole in our palates after uh, yeah, uh, I, tasting the subtlety of this uh, <laughs> uh, of this whiskey. But um, didn't you uh, kind of yeah. want this to be uh, fried banana peanut butter sandwich flavored? <laughs> well, you know, we've had some other Elvis named beers that have gone that direction, that peanut butter and nanner sort of, uh, Man. sort of direction. Wow, look at the color. The, the way it pours out yeah. is, is a little. You know, Brewdog is such an interesting brewery because they are, um, I've always felt like they were very experimental before this sort of latest trend of breweries, you know, um, yes. trying, you know, very limited release beers and Thank stuff. You. Brewdog always seemed like a very experimental brewery, uh, even going back, you know, three, four, five years. And, trendsetters. Uh, uh, trendsetters, yeah. for sure. And we haven't had one of their beers on in a long time, so it's been I, a feel while. Like, I feel like I'm riding well, a great wrong Brewdog here. also made that, uh, you remember that, um, oh, Wow. Okay, so before even that, I love the color of this beer. Yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I, so, I did a wow too because I, of all of the grapefruit infused and grapefruit added beers that we've had, and I I love grapefruit IPAs. <laughs> I I've never had one that on the nose had this much grapefruit, yeah. and I think it's worth. Acknowledging for your national global audience that we uh, live in a place where one knows grapefruit. So oh, a couple, yeah. couple yeah, quick things. Sure. First yeah. off, in the comments, Alan Denny posted, well, well, and he says, I've been practicing. <laughs> so is he going to do the well, well next week in my absence? Yes, that- he has oh. been practicing. He's oh. he's expressed to me that he wants to do that. Um, well, so I want to point out. That's like, a reason for people to tune in all by itself, <laughs> right? Right. I haven't even tried this yet, but what what I find amusing about this is there's so many grapefruit IPAs that don't actually have grapefruit. They just have the hops. It's very yeah, grapefruity. Right, that's very right, grapefruity, yes. And, and Brewdog just said, you know what? Hell with it. Grapefruit. Yep. Well, and, and we've talked about this on the show before, but and, and I don't know this for a fact, but... I have been told, and my understanding is, that Carbach Brewery here in Houston, which had the, what is it, something and bright? What is the? This is uh, big and bright. Big and bright. They did their big and bright IPA. Um, uh, What I have been told, maybe we'll have to ask them if this is true, I don't know if they'd admit it, is that when they were acquired by Anheuser-Busch, that one of the first things that AB told them was, don't use so much grapefruit in the big and bright. You know what else AB and And they backed it off, and it's not as good now. Stop making sympathy for the logger, which is a really is huge a mistake. Brilliant beer, yeah, yeah. I'm, um, I'm still. Have you tried this? They'll bring it back. I have, and I love this it. This is brilliant. It is. It, it's now. I love grapefruit, and I love IPA, but they don't. Yeah, yeah. They, it's, you said yeah, it, buddy, dude. He's picked this up so much faster <laughs> than you did. Um, uh, the, this is this is one of the best pairings of IPA and grapefruit I've so ever good. had. It's this is delicious. so multi round. Yet IPA, mm. it's super hard to even explain. Go brew dog, like holy cow! This is this might be one of the best IPAs I've had. I I would agree. This is jumping right up into my top end. Like IPAs. A great time. Yeah. And I I'm an IPA guy, but you know I try a lot of different ones. A lot of them, you know, going the citrus route with the hops, and they're very juicy, and I love that style and everything. But this has, strangely enough, because it's grapefruit, it has none of that bitterness to it. Well, IPAs, to me, did what alternative music did to pop music in the 90s. It just kind of all became the same thing after a while. Mm -hmm. And I like to think that when you have something this exceptional, this is this is an outstanding beer. This Are you telling me the beer. Verve Pipe wasn't a really uh, groundbreaking original band? Is that what you're getting <laughs> okay, at? Okay, can you name more than one song by them? Uh, the Freshman and... Oh, crap. Can you name more than one Iron Maiden song? Well, yeah. Of course. See? Of course my, I Kate, can. My, my point I is now made. I a Iron Maiden song. <laughs> <laughs> you mean a list? Yeah. All right. It, it, but that's a good point. But no, you're right. The the juicy hazy IPA almost became like a, a stereotype. Yeah. You yeah. know, a, 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 a yeah. sort of a thing that okay, everybody's doing one. Some of them are great. Some of them are okay. Um, in general, I like the style, but this stands out to me. This no, is why you're not happy that people Brewdog aren't doing. Just did to just did to. Juicy IPAs, what Herbie Hancock likes to do to jazz. Uh, okay. He sees what's happening, and then about every 10 years, he comes in and lays down an album that makes you go WTF and yes. does it better than everybody. Oh, by the way. These guys just did that with this beer. This is amazing. I think that means you need a watermelon man 
IPA. That's right. Up, right. Yeah. Bruce, <laughs> uh, Bruce Stark mentioned in the comments, by the way, you said WTF, that if you look at the calendar, MT is Monday and Tuesday, and after that, it's WTF. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we can always count on Mr. On Stark for, uh, uh, for a, a nice little addition to the show there somewhere. Well, I think, I think when everybody stopped trying to have bigger hops than the next guy, I feel like right. this is where that, right. this is, this is I, a perfect place for that to settle. And I love big hoppy beers, but this to me is so much more well crafted. Yeah. It's just, wow, I'm brew dog. Brew dog. I am impressed. If you had that locally? bitterness, you wouldn't be able to have that flavor. I did. I bought that at Specs. I'm, I'm nice. going to Specs. Yeah. This is fantastic. Yep. It That's really a buy. Is. It really is. So 6.5% malt beverage with natural flavors. Uh, Columbus, Ohio. According to the Surgeon General, women should not drink alcoholic beverages. Yeah, it's like the same person writes all of these. I know. It's like they got to get an original copy. United we stand. It's like it's a government agency yeah. or something, right? Yeah. United we stand for better beer. Mm -hmm. Fiercely defiant and independent. Well, I'll just mention this. We talked about this on the show before, but smoking and toasting directly influencing sales. And here's another example of that because both Ian and I are going and buying some of this yeah, oh yeah. dog mm -hmm. Elvis juice on our way home. This is outstanding. Yeah, really is, really is. And I, I, you know, I'll just mention I'm the IPA guy. So for you to rave that way about an IPA it is really something. This is great. literally one of the best IPAs we've ever had on the show. Mm -hmm. And this we've had some good ones. Two hundred. We've had Ghost in the Machine. We've had uh, uh, Lone Pint Yellow Rose. I mean, those are exceptional IPAs. See, and, and the thing is, it's hard. Like this, Ghost in the Machine is definitely on that list. Mm -hmm. You put these, this and Ghost in the Machine right next to each other, and I'm going to have a real hard time picking. Yeah. And look just the, due to its newness, look I'm at how going similar here. those cans are, which is kind of crazy because one of the things I, I love about the craft brew thing that's going on right now and canning specifically is like the art that's on these cans and like the opportunity to like really kind of highlight graphics and, mm -hmm. and really cool mm -hmm. stuff. And these are just some really, really like, Straightforward, somewhat plain Jane, kind of sim similar color, right, yeah, right, very right. simple, similar design, mm -hmm. kind of thing you know, going uh, on there. Right, so delicious beer. It's not like uh, one of the uh, Adroit Theory uh, uh, cans with yep. the you know with the crazy you know crazy graphics artwork and, and the yeah. skulls and all yeah. that. Yeah, I bought for a buddy of mine. His birthday was uh, last month, um, right before my birthday, and uh, as a gift, I go over to his house once in a while. He was right around the corner from me, and. Uh, he likes quirky stuff. He's the kind of guy, he's he's so quirky, it's a little hard to buy for him, right? Mm -hmm. But I happen to be in Specs, and uh, and I found a six-pack of Dead Guy Ale. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, I don't know exactly what the series was, but the cans, three of the cans in there were all white with just the outline stuff. And <laughs> you put your own art. Oh, oh wow. how cool. cool. And so I bought him that, and I said, this is for you. Have fun with it. I'm 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 similar to that. I'm kind of quirky, but easy to buy for. Yes. Yeah. I'm I'm easy. Yes. I, you know, I like. I'm just happy to be beer. thought of. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> All right. We have a lot left to do on the show because Ian has now come up with the idea that we're going to try blending whiskey on our own. We have one more of the uh, whiskey ingredient whiskeys to taste. We have, of course, then to taste uh, uh, the Legion, and we have another beer to taste. And as if all that weren't enough. Drinking news is coming up next. That's a sound effect you can't get on the uh, on the little know. box. We'll be right back. It's smoking Man and toasting. Baby. Welcome back. It's smoking and toasting. I don't even have my headphones on. How late was I? <laughs> <laughs> It's smoking and toasting, the program that's all about craft beer, fine spirits. Oddly enough, I think you timed that almost perfect. Hand-rolled cigars, you know, and some things, some things just become ingrained in you, and they never leave you. Uh, I, 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 uh, when I was a kid, when I was in high school, before I could hold down a real job, I had um, um, this job working in the peanut fields, moving irrigation pipe. Now, it's all like automated and on wheels these days. Yeah, yeah. But back then, you would hire kids, summer kids, or maybe like migrant workers, because we worked with some of the migrant <laughs> workers too, and you know you'd, they'd uh, set up the sprinkler things, and you'd irrigate peanuts, and then you'd uh, six hours later, you would move the line over like 12, 13 rows to the next place, yeah. and set it up to go again. And I remember when you would pull the pipes apart and then you'd take them over and put them back together, you'd do a push, turn, pull. It was the motion you used to latch it into place. And I think for the next 10 years of my life, 
Every time I would close a door, I would push, turn, pull. Like it becomes like ingrained <laughs> in you. So hitting the post on a on a song, even hey, when what, you have what your he means by hitting the post is you know you have thing. a you have a song intro, and it usually comes in and it's, it's like usually, a DJ thing. Yeah, yeah, it's right, it's right when right when the song kicks in, or a lot of times when the vocals start. You yeah, know, like right. You want to hit that right 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 as it happens. More right about it. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny because. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a couple was it last week? When did we have Ro- uh, Rowdy in here? Oh, it was a couple weeks ago. A couple yeah, weeks we did ago. the. Uh, I, so I've got these the two like DJ legendary guys. lifelong <laughs> DJ guys, and so I started messing with them because what I start doing sometimes is to just apply a little background music. And it messes them up. They don't know right. what to do. They're right. like, because now our brains are trying to figure out how long we have to talk. Yeah, they're cute. It, it's, that's exactly, that's exactly Absolutely true. Absolutely fantastic. Where in most other situations, that's, right. that's background music. Yep. You right, know, that's, right. No, my, that's brain, my brain's trying to analyze it, going, how long have I got to, right. the, to the bridge? How Roddy long I looked to at me and goes, I thought you were trying to play me off. You know, yeah. like they do on the, on the award shows yeah. when yeah. the music starts Thank happening. You. Yeah. Uh, Good news me, is you've won an award. Yeah. Bad yeah. news is stop talking. <laughs> let me speak to the violence in the Sudan. Ding, ding, ding. The music starts, right? Like, Was that the Eddie Murphy skit where he's talking about uh, Stevie Wonder thanking everybody? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like to thank Adam and Eve. And Cain and Abel, and, you know, <laughs> and it goes like from that. there. It's going to keep on going, yeah. Uh, well, my friends, uh, we are brought to you by MyCigarShirts.com. Great shirts on the web uh, for cigar lovers. New designs available. MyCigarShirts.com because cigars. cigars. And it's time now, my friends, for drinking, drinking news. Drinking news. Drinking news. And now it's time for drinking news. Florida man with one arm said he had a gator for a pet. When I asked about his other arm, he said, uh, I had to take my gator to the vet. Drinking news, drinking news. I wasn't quite now ready it's with the recording. time for so drinking news. Had to improvise. Cheers, y'all. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I jumped the gun a little bit on it's that. It's okay. Yeah, you went to the uh, you went to the bridge before I was uh, expecting you to, so it's all good. I didn't do a chorus first, you know. As Timberland once said, "Take it to the bridge." Oh my! Wait, that was Timberland. That it was. He was the one that said it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, on the Justin Timberlake song. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was on sexy. Back. Yeah, when I bring, think, bring oh, sexy that's right. Back. When I think, take back. It, but when I think take it to the bridge, you know, I always. Immediately, James Brown. Oh well, there's that too. I'm sure. I'm sure Timbaland was channeling oh, James yes. Brown uh, when he did it. That, so. was a, that was a really, really oddly good album. Quick, yeah, yes, it really was. <laughs> like, wasn't really, it? really uh-huh. good album. It really was. Uh, quick reminder for those of you who might be new to the show that Drinking News is a uh, a story that we share to you that we believe to be true. It at least appeared in some uh, publication that was not named The Onion, and it uh, it is. A story that might sometimes be about drinking, but not always. But it's always a story that's always probably best consumed if you've been drinking. Drinking news, <laughs> drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. A Florida woman wanted to become a more influential Instagram influencer. So she decided to promote her Instagram account by sneaking into a local high school and posing as a student, according to police. 28-year-old. I can't see anything going wrong with Did you just <laughs> say 28-year-old? I can't see anything going wrong with that. 28-year-old Audrey Nicole Francis Queenie is now facing charges of burglary educational institution interference and resisting an officer after police said she, quote, blended in with students, end quote, and nonchalantly walked into American Senior High School in Hialeah, Florida last week, according to a police report that was obtained by Oxygen.com. To carry out the ruse, Miami-Dade police said the 28-year-old woman donned clothes similar to the high school students, carried a book bag, and entered the school holding a skateboard and carrying a painting. Is that what kids do now? I mean, I know I'm out of touch with <laughs> wow. the I just the, randomly the carry youth. paintings around. Yeah, but yeah. do they carry skateboards and paintings? Is that what they do? Get with it, Pops. After successfully gaining entry, police say she walked through the halls, handing out flyers promoting her Instagram account and asking students to follow her on social media. 
Uh, one student told a local TV station that she'd been recording video and showing off her Instagram account, which featured videos and images of her wearing a red devil's mask. Wow. It's crazy, the student said. It's very creepy. A police say that Francis Queenie had stopped some students in the hall, preventing them from getting to their classes in time in what they called a pre-planned attempt to gain access to the school. And security officers attempted to stop the overaged would-be student as she wandered the halls, but she managed to slip out of the school by using a side exit leading to the faculty parking lot, parking lot according to the police report. Did she get away on her skateboard? She left behind, however... An obvious clue to her identity. The flyers she'd been passing out had listed her Instagram handle and account. So police tracked her. <laughs> police tracked her to her North Miami Beach home where they arrested her, according to authorities. In her last this is this is the whole reason to do this story, by the way. In her last Instagram post before her arrest, the Florida woman wrote, I legit don't have I legit don't know how many cops I have outside of my house right now. I'm not going outside at all. I wonder if they are following. Her. Yes, yeah. you are. Yeah. <laughs> drinking news. There's your drinking news. Drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. Drinking news. Drinking news. That was time for drinking news. Do y'all feel with that whole White Tiger saga that's happened here in the last week or so that we've gotten that much closer to? To Florida. Florida. Oh, <laughs> and, and as if it weren't complete enough, my favorite part of the whole, and for any of you that don't know, there was apparently a tiger loose in Houston, Texas. Yeah. Yes, that's For the last happened. couple of weeks, right? <laughs> and and it's this tiger, and there was a, somehow it was connected to some guy who was a felon or escaped from jail or something, and yeah. he was running around with the tiger for a while, and then the tiger was on its own. But the Florida connection happened when Carol Baskin offered a reward yes. for the capture of the tiger. Carol Baskin, for any of you who don't know, is the woman that Joe Exotic was feuding in Carol. in that, uh, in that uh, Netflix series. Uh, you know, the woman that killed her husband. Have you ever seen the movie Idiocracy? Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, you know that whole montage where like society is decaying? Mm -hmm. That's where we're at. We're, we're in the middle right. of that we, montage. We've been right? there, I think, for a little bit. It didn't start last week. <laughs> I, I heard a, a comedian say this. In a uh, miracle of science, we're yeah. going to be able to <laughs> reapply or I, reattach his I heard penis. A, I heard a comedian say this, and, and I think it's one of the more sage and wise things that I've heard in the last couple of years. Comedians he said, can be poignant. Yes, they can. He said, you know, we live in a world today where we're so divided. People on the left are way over here. People on the right are way over here. But there are some things, some things that can bring balance and bring us all together. And I think we can all agree that Carol Baskin killed her husband. <laughs> <laughs> so for any of you that haven't watched The Tiger King, go watch it and you'll know what we're talking about. Is there anyone in the world that hasn't watched The Tiger I, you King? You know, I didn't this make point, it no. all the way through. You, you didn't have to. That's but, the thing. Man, I felt like my brain was getting slightly <laughs> picked out of the side of my skull when I was it, watching it. It has that. Like a little bit at a time. It is, it is the best example I can think of of... Car crash television, meaning oh, yeah. that you know you should look away, but you just can't. Can't stop. You just can't. can't. Stop. Uh, let's uh, let's do some whiskey here. We have one more of the uh, whiskeys of the blend yes. to try here, and uh, this is what goes into making Legion. Which, by the way, it, I know and you're making some changes. This is very that different is, again. That is this a beautiful is a bottle. bottle. Right? Yeah, 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 it's a beautiful bottle. This is fruity and vanilla on the nose. Oh yes, again. So you're talking about. Three very, very different juices going in here. Correct. But we found out that the first one and the second one are actually very similar. It was simply how they'd been finished. Always in origin, right? They're all right. going to be simple, similar in origin. We have bourbon all the way. So we start with that flavor reference of what we started with the, the majority of the blend, which is that first, bottle, uh, first glass we tasted. The second one's going to be that authentic bourbon that's finished for up to two full summers in wine casks. And then this third is going to be the smallest component of the blend that Shinji puts together. That is going to be uh, Kentucky Straight Bourbon rested in a Oloroso sherry cask for up to two okay. full summers yeah. in Kentucky. This wow. has totally different. Such like this one, I can just drink like this. It's fine. Do you ever wonder if you're missing out on sales 
because you put all of these together and made Legion instead of releasing them each individually? I've personally missed out on money in my pocket by not selling <laughs> these bottles to people that have I offered money bet, after I these bet, tastings. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, this this is delicious, and it it again. I would have thrown my hands up oh, and said, we have a winner. The yep. dryness and the uh, finish on this yep. is just outstanding. It's exceptional. The nose. It's just this has exceptional. like a This has a uh, like a tart cherry kind of on the nose that I'm getting. There's also like this big vanilla yeah, big, kind big of thing vanilla. going on. Probably as big a vanilla as I've ever tasted yeah. in a bourbon. It's a lot just, of vanilla, a lot of dried fruit, like sticky fruit, too. Mm-hmm. I get a little salted peanuts, like skin on peanuts. That's something that I kind of really think the Oloroso brings into the flavor on this. This is a good chance for you to enjoy the flavor of dried fruits without anything sticking to your teeth. That's right. The aftertaste on this also is the very cinnamony, like mm-hmm. we had in yes. the very beginning of yes. this. It's not as pronounced ding, ding. up front. Yeah. The bourbon, right? It's not as pronounced up front, but it is there, it's particularly on the finish. Yeah. It's still yeah. bourbon, you know, with the finishes, it's still bourbon. Right. So what you picked up in that first uh, that first taste, you'll be able to find nuances and, and things that are left over from so in are, that flavor. So are both of these the same distillate, although finished Absolutely different? correct, Okay, yes. so all three of these are the same distillate, and then one's uh, unfinished? One is unfinished. That's going to be the majority. And then you have a, and a the wine and the Oloroso wine cask, uh, so, red wine cask yep. and a sherry cask. Roughly, cat, yeah, yeah, roughly cask. what is the balance? You said the unfinished is the majority. Is it, you know, is it 50%? I don't roughly? really know. No one's ever told me because you don't, you don't we have to give stay me the flexible formula, on that. Yeah. Are, yeah. Are, you, are you trying to win the contest? Yeah, I am. I'm trying to win the <laughs> blending contest. So you caught me. Um, I'm playing dumb right it's, now. It's really good. Yeah. There's also How a little brown sugar thing going on in this, too. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, bourbon, how come you dance so good? Mm. I'm a fan. I'm That's for wonderful. It. Yeah, I'm for it. So put All my right. vote in for yes. So we have several things to do here. We want to try the finished blended product. Yes. And then we're going to try to like blend our own. And we also have a beer that we need to get to. You want to do beer and first? And this is from the brewery. So let's go there next. Yeah. Oh. I uh, love the brewery, by the way. Uh, by the way, you're bringing uh, next week when I'm not on the show... Ian will be hosting with Alan Denny, and Ian will be bringing the beers. So prepare for the first one to be about 11 ABV. <laughs> That'll be the and low. And then to just go up yeah. from there. And prepare for <laughs> chewiness in your beer. I do like so big if you, beers. If you are a big beer aficionado, next week is uh, is going to be a good week for you. And now, I, this, I, I by don't the mean way, big like the bottle's big. Yeah, no. This, by the way, should be a big beer. This is... Uh, this? This is... What's uh, the biggest kind of, percentage beer you've tried? I think what about thirty-two percent? Thirty? You tried a thirty-two? What was thirty-two? Yeah, that was a brew dog collab. That was the um, tactical nuclear penguin. Holy oh wow! Holy. Did we do that on the show? No. Oh okay. I had that at my birthday party uh, years ago, and it was wow. It was distinctive. Well, I, I let I me put it this way: I don't remember four people that. split a twelve-ounce bottle and yeah. felt it afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I, I, was just I don't saying, doubt it. I don't, I don't remember that party, and now I think I know why. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, tactical new, and then and then um, there's uh, uh, Bismarck. Uh, Sink the Bismarck was the next beer that was made that was that was what actually a, a bigger name. than that. What a great and then name. I think they topped out. But the way they had to uh, the way they had to do that to raise the alcohol content is they would freeze. Ah, skim. They, yeah, yeah. They would freeze it and then um, wow. And 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 then you end up with a. Uh, I don't know what the process is. So how big is this paltry Imperial IPA, uh, the Imperial uh, Stout? Ooh, this smells good. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That big malty smell. Uh, Let's see. What does it say? Are you ready for this? Yeah. 4.5%. 4.5? Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. This does not smell like a 4.5. This tastes like maple syrup in a can. So you'll see on the front of it, Ian, where it says sticky bun. Oh, well, I'm really, really in on the maple syrup in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it like- says bourbon barrel aged imperial style with pecans, maple syrup, cinnamon, and maple and natural uh, vanilla flavors. So I want to tell you that right now, I'm sure the maple and vanilla flavors and the cinnamon are a little crowded because of the whiskey we just had. That's not a bad thing. So what's left is uh, I got I got the pecan shell astringency. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And then I've got that maple syrup that's absolutely huge in this. See, so this, the pecan, I kind of want this on waffles. The pecan and the maple, though, like I get where they're going with sticky bun here because the pecan and the maple gives you that vibe. Crunch and munch. 
Crunch and This munch. tastes like crunch and yeah. munch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, crunch I, I, and I munch can get behind that. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> crunch and munch is one of those things that you don't think you even like it, it, and then you so have good. the first <laughs> and bite. So good. And, then you take, <laughs> and then you take one handful and you're screwed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. like, forget you it. You know, and it's funny because Going the down. stickiness in this, like, you don't get the peanuts in it really so much but that coating that's on the peanuts mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, when you said pecans like, like i was already thinking like it was caramel corn but then when you said pecans it's like all right what yeah, is the that yeah the caramel's pretty like, crunchy caramel flavor is pretty good yeah. but but it like has the, that the pecan, coating like, on the pecans you know the beer nut when coating. you're eating fresh pecans and and i being here from texas i just assume that everyone has yeah. mm-hmm. right you always get that one little interior membrane piece or that little tiny bit of shell that's super astringent <laughs> mm-hmm. and it has a very specific mm-hmm. flavor mm-hmm. and um and that's this has that on the aftertaste it's really interesting i think it's delicious don't you oh yeah yeah it's yeah i'm fun. all about it i, I want to pour it on sticky pancakes. buns i can kind of i can kind of go for that um i again i think i think we just uh Mask the cinnamon and um, vanilla with the with the whiskey, but but I, I'm starting to kind of get some of that now. Wow, cinnamon well, just, just on the aftertaste. Right I now. just went back to that third uh, whiskey, and you get almost this like you really feel the sherry. Like the sherry is really prominent when you. Uh, I think the saltiness would probably pop pretty good too. Yes, for sure. Mm. Mm. I really taste the pecan. You're not from around here, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well That's done. one of those ways you know somebody isn't from around here, <laughs> down here in Texas, is if they say pecans. Pecans. Pecan yeah. is, a, is a very different thing from a pecan. Yes, yes. It, it is. Don't it mix is. them up. It's what yeah. you take on a road Only trip. Only one of those you want to put in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so this is delicious, and I think it brings us now to the point where We've had each of the yeah, let's separate see how it goes ingredients together, shall we? the distillate. Let's see how the blender did yeah. in putting all of this together. So if uh, we were going to tell the story in a few chapters, we would talk about the the way that this whiskey is made in Kentucky with Fred behind the, the helm here. And then as Fred and Shinji worked together to create the flavors and the finishing. And then now we hand it over to Shinji to go ahead and finish up with this final blend. And now here we go with Legion at 94 proof. Now, remember, we've tried everything at cast strength just because I wanted to delight your right. palate. so this is going to be gentler. And this is going to be a little bit of a gentler entry point. That's right. Mm-hmm. But you'll still see all those complex flavors, flavors that you picked yes. up. That's right. And, and honestly, uh, you know, I know, Ian, I know you're a fan of all the cast strength stuff. And I am too. But sometimes I enjoy something that's not quite so strong because I feel like I can drink more of it. Right. I can enjoy... The flavor, I can take it in for a longer period of time, whereas with the cask strength stuff, it's, you know, the end, the end, is, the end is coming sooner. Yeah. And you know? I think we have the, the wonderful, you know, the, the sum is, is equal or better than, than its parts, right, in, in yes. this particular instance. And since we've been celebrating blending uh. and talking about blenders, one thing that Shinji likes to do, whether he's blending uh, Hakushu or Yamazaki or Hibiki whiskey over in Japan, one thing he likes to do is actually let the whiskeys kind of mingle for 30 days in stainless. So we do that mm-hmm. in Kentucky as well. Then we bring those down to 94 proof and put them in the bottle here. Uh, on the nose, uh, the the phrase that came to mind for me was vanilla pudding. Mm. Just a it really does, creamy sort of... It a, picks up a creaminess. Yeah. Kind of, it's, 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 it's really interesting on the nose because I'm like now that we've done the deconstruction, I pick up the elements of. of the get it all. Those. Ones, yeah. Like yeah. the most interesting is like the the creamy and vanilla are right on top, and then right underneath is this this little slip of red wine, and then after that it becomes kind of this fruity character and sweetness. So, when they're all put together, the result is a more. I don't mean this in a negative way. A more traditional bourbon sure. taste, a more because these flavors are pretty extreme, right? A yeah. more what you expect from a bourbon that yes. you buy on the shelf, but what you get is a depth of flavor that is further beyond yeah. what some of the other things you might have tried at this proof are going to give you. And that's why I was so excited by the way you described your cigar and the way you described your cigar, because it was all about complexity. I mean, and you really leaned into it. And so, Ian, and, and I think that this is an incredibly complex bourbon. It really right? is. Yeah. Agreed. I, uh, and, and it's so incredibly interesting. So first off, the first whiskey we had was a punch of cinnamon. 
Mm-hmm. The second we had had that dry, pardon me, oaky uh, and and mm-hmm. fruity wine kind of thing. The last one we had was in had, the sherry cask. Had the uh, oloroso cask, which was uh, which was sweeter, especially on the back end of it. Um, and it's really interesting to see because the final product doesn't punch right up front like any of them do. Now that part of that's probably due to the balance. cast cast strength. Was that balance? <laughs> yeah, part of that's <laughs> the due key to the keyword of the show yeah. today: balance. But it's amazing how they blend together, and that thing that they all kind of have that punch mm-hmm, up front mm-hmm. is smoothed out when you blend it together. Yep. It's that's. That's incredibly interesting. I think it comes it's across. Like, it's like adding salt to make it sweeter or something. It's just a, it's counterintuitive mm, right. and a little strange, no, you know. But you're absolutely right about that. It's got that almost salty sweetness that, uh, you know, the the. This is probably not a good comparison, but what came to my mind was kettle corn popcorn. Yeah, where it has both the salt and the sweet. Yep, and they combine just so perfectly to make that so much more interesting than regular popcorn. Yep, you know, uh, and, and this this kind of does that to me. I think it's got a, a the sort of sweetness to it that you associate with Kentucky whiskey, but it's got more complexity below that. Yeah. Uh, so it gives you a chance to go, okay, very cool, easy on ramp entry point, and now ooh. But there's some big complexities mm-hmm. and, and, and and layer diversity, but then there's also a lot of subtlety to it too, right? What, uh, Which is just it keeps going. I'm just projecting a little bit here because I a lot of times, you know, I, I, I drink whiskey neat but I do that all the time. My therapist I, tells me I do that all the time. I uh, Drink whiskey meat. I also um, <laughs> I also will sometimes add a chip of ice and uh, mm-hmm. we don't have one right here. What flavors pop out when you add a chip of ice to this. It's kind of crazy you mentioned that because I really feel like when you try this bourbon I feel like neat as we flavor, are, it's very really winter and fall. It's it's a very seasonal bourbon. If it, And I mean that in the fact that trying it like this, it's very fall and winter. Oh. And then when you put a, a little ice cube or a couple of dashes of cool water in it, it becomes a little more spring and summer, hmm. which is really kind of nice because you get those oaky, sweeter, heavier notes as we're trying it right now. Yeah. But then if you were to add just a splash, you'd be drinking that lawnmower beer with it. Yeah. See, I yeah. love when somebody will describe things in that way. It's fall and winter, but when you add this, it becomes spring and summer. Like, yeah. To me, those are those are the more poetic ways, I guess, to describe well, whiskey things. Whiskey is romantic, as opposed, right? Right. Yeah. Because, because it is. This is. There's a romance to this, and it isn't all just about that is uh, uh, finished in oak cask, therefore it requires this flavor you know what i mean yeah. like, and there and certainly there's a lot of that that is the science but to me great whiskey great tequila great cigars it's about that wonderful intersection of art and science i want to point out for those of you uh since things are opening up right now and we have so many people vaccinating um when you get to a bar and you order your whiskey and you order it with a little ice or a little water, and the guy mm-hmm. next to you who knows way more than you do goes, I can't believe that you ruined that whiskey with water or ice. That's not how you drink whiskey. You just look at that guy and say, you're right, sir. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, y'all. Yeah. All right. We've all met that guy. Oh, we are, I, we're going to take I'd a like break. i like to say I love that guy. <laughs> we only have a short segment left. Ian, do you think we can do this, this combo? Thing, this blending idea that you have, you think we can do that in a short This segment? is a one shot, one kill try. Okay, fair okay. enough. Fair enough. Okay. We'll try it as we'll try to blend our own uh, legion and see how we just, come out. I'm just thinking, like making sweet love, we will be in, done, and out. I, I'm thinking we are like not <laughs> quick and painless. You won't feel a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one and done. We'll be right back. It's smoking and toasting. <laughs> Got blue there for a minute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. It is uh, smoking and toasting, and it's show number two hundred and thirty-four. Halfway to three hundred. We are brought to you by mycigarshirts.com. Great shirts on the web for cigar lovers and the people who love them. New designs available now. Mycigarshirts.com because cigars, cigars. Yes, thank you very much. So, all right. So, my plan here is yes, we're just okay. gonna, we're just going to wing it. Okay. So first off, fair. First off, we know a couple things about this. So I, I just, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I'm take glad this you know something about this. Of course, we know that this. 
first bottle that we yep. tried mm -hmm. is the bulk of the juice. And then we know that the last bottle we tried is the least of what's in there. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with this bottle, and I'm simply going to take a clean glass. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't take that one. That one's oh. not clean. There you go. I'm not clean. No, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'll take a glass that I used previously because it doesn't matter. Well, here's what I'm thinking. When you mix this up, you should pour a little for uh, Adam to taste and for our other Adam to taste, and they can be the Okay, so we need to make it a how, little bit bigger so do. we can have a little a few tastes, okay? The atomic connection. Yeah. And I'm going to pass that to you, and you're going to pour how much of that you think you need. Okay. Then I'm going to take the second one. Right, this is the one that's the main juice, right? That's the main juice. Okay. And the size of the glasses we are using right now is about a, what, 10-ounce, 12-ounce glass? No. I, I, see, I'm gonna I pour, was promised there'd be no meth. <laughs> So. I'm gonna I'm gonna appropriately pour, approximately pour, not appropriately, what I think ooh. is going to be ooh. about the right blend. Ooh, ooh you got an ooh, ooh there. I don't know if you ooh. may have messed up, Ian. All right, pass that. Uh, one no, over. I think that's, I'm still good. Okay, that's the that's the second. This is the yeah one cap. second okay. juice. Okay, third juice. Oh, I didn't grab water. Do we have any water in the fridge? We do. Sadly not. We're out of water. Said we were out of water. Okay. I think it's sparkling and hard. Yeah, it's all like that. <laughs> Which will throw this whole experiment out of whack. Yes, it will. Okay. I, I, I think Ian went heavy with his pour here. I went very uh, light, so we'll see how that... Touch touch more. I, I just, I'm not sure go. he went heavy enough. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. then I'm sure I didn't yeah. then, but we'll, we'll see but how this But you did start... Goes. You have a smaller base pour. Okay. All yeah. Right. So we'll Which see. I think you might be more on par with. Okay. So now we have a couple glasses for me to purse huh. this out a little bit. And I'm going to purse out my blend, which I think I am... Yeah, I'm woefully off because... And I've, I've still got a little bit Do we need a... You want a control yeah, sample? Maybe a, a little, control sample. Sample. Maybe a little yeah. water might have helped this. Okay, so that's my uh, legion there. Is this control Do we mind here? if I just mm -hmm. get a glass of uh, uh, tap water? Yeah, go for it. That's the control sample. Control, uh, pour that into your control sample. Yes. Adam, that's my mix. That's my mix right there. Don't mind if I do, sir. Okay, please do. Grab some water All right. Oh, okay. You're gonna oh, grab that. Thank Thanks. you, Adam. Because I think here's my mix. Mine oh, no, smells. Get, don't that. Adam's gonna be the judge. Mine smells oh, spicy, no, but I'm gonna add. You want to be the judge? I got Adam. I got Adam I'll, some already. I'm gonna add a little touch of water to mine. Okay. Because I think yes, that that's I would, gonna, I'd like to try yours after a little water, please. I, okay. I'm gonna uh, I'll put it back in. We'll try I'm gonna it say that water. it's gonna pull some of that spiciness out. 94 okay. proof. Right 94 now, proof. this smells pretty much like Christmas. What you're blending right now probably as a. Yeah. It's definitely cast strength, aggregate of everything here. You're going to be looking at about one right. one seventeen. So I'd like to point out that our <laughs> our water comes in a Step Brothers cup. One of my favorite you top got five movies. To love that, haven't you? Got to love that top five movie. Let's start with just a right. touch. I'll try a you little of that in mine Nighthawk. as well. Nighthawk. <laughs> oh, oh, we're so almost there. Hold on. Oh, Ian. Yeah, we're going there. Wow. I pass that over. I want to try a little water in mine. We are now whiskey blending. Oh, wow. Like, that changes the nose so amazing. Just a splash of water. Mm. Okay. I don't think I have quite the refined whiskey that, that Legend actually is. However, uh, do we have some cups I can... Um... Yes. Uh, here is a fresh one. All right. Here's one for you. Here is a fresh one. Thank you, sir. So, Adam, I think I gave you a sample of mine before I diluted it. Wow. So I may need to give you another. Okay, on aroma it. alone, Ian. Oh, you, you haven't done Okay. So you've let done me, a what, good job. I will actually pour it back in and then the repour you. So can, uh, yeah. But you've got Adam. the control, yeah, right? Okay. Control. And I'm going to need one more for you, Cruz. So that's Ian's juice. Here's Cruz's. Uh, and you need to try mine. Did I hand you any of mine I don't yet? have one of yours. Okay. And you don't have yeah, one of mine. I'm glad I brought cups today. Shut We're with the front door. There you go, Ian. Okay. And do you have a cup that I can give you some of and mine in? Thank you, sir. Hmm. Uh, I will have to reuse I'm that sure one, but fine. that's okay. You did start off with a big base, and I still get that sentiment quite a bit. So I've got the Ian in my left hand, the mine in my right hand, and this is the control. So I'm going to go control first. All right. Control first. Damn, that's some fine whiskey right that's there. That's good. <laughs> that's really good. It's really good. It's, and I know, I know that 
spirits people hate when they say this. There's, but it is smooth. Yeah, I say I, that it's in, my least in, favorite word. In but. The, but in the best way. Yeah. Like, let's put it this way. It is very pleasurable to drink. It does not. Aye, aye, Captain. You don't make the Jägermeister face when you drink it. You know what I mean? Well, let's say this. I think with its complexity and everything that's got going on for it, it's an awesome cigar whiskey. I th- oh, yeah. I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think you'd have a hard time finding a cigar that didn't go well with it. Mm-hmm. I tend to agree. All right. All right. So I'm going to taste yours first. And I will do. And yours smells like hand soap. I will do the opposite. Good. Thank oh, wait. You. That might be because I went to the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yours smells pretty good. Again. Yours smells a little more gentle than mine. Mm-hmm. Imagine that. So yours is definitely bigger cinnamon and vanilla than the than the control, mm-hmm. but it's got that smoothness. Womp womp. Yeah, it's not a bad whiskey. So mine is definitely gentler than yours, but. The finish on mine is stronger than yours. I agree. Mine finishes with a, a whiskey hug that's kind of like, you know, when you get hugged by that guy you knew in high school and he's a little too aggressive with that hug. That's kind of like the whiskey yeah. hug on mine. Yeah. It's like, okay, dude, we're cool. Mine's got a little more maple syrup going on, yes, especially I agree. in the middle of the flavor. I don't think I don't think either one of us is a master blender. No. So I, I think, think Shinji's job is secure for the moment. Adam, what what are your thoughts? Adam, my producer, was given uh, the control The sample question is, which one is closer to the original? Oh, no, I'm that's not the say, question. Which one's best? I just have one thing to say. Well, I thought we were going say. for closer to the original. Uh, I have, I have okay. one thing to say. Let's leave it to the pros. <laughs> <laughs> Words of wisdom from behind the wheels of steel. That was after he said, and I quote, bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Uh, well, I suppose if my whiskey were ever released as its own thing, it would be a new whiskey. I'd drink both of your whiskeys. Let's just. Uh, let's I was just gonna put say it like it'd be that, a new yeah. whiskey on the shelf called Meh. I'd say I'd say honestly, like uh, if I was gonna honestly rate mine, mine's a little definitely a little on the hot side. Yep. Um, and it's mine's a little on the mellow side. Definitely a little too cinnamony. Like it's it, it tastes like one of those little cinnamon star things you get at a restaurant. But what this tells mm. me is, but not in a bad way. You no. Know, but what this tells me is how big a deal it is to have a blender who really knows how to yeah. do this. You know. Yeah. Because we just tried it, and you know we didn't do bad considering we no, have they're both no idea what the hell we're doing. Drinkable uh, and borderline tasty. But but you know to really get something that people are gonna. <laughs> You know, wouldn't that be a great review? Yeah. Like if you opened up the uh, if you opened up the whiskey advocate magazine yep. or whatever that magazine is, and and like uh, it's like, oh look, they reviewed our whiskey, and it says, what what, what did you say exactly? Borderline tasty. Borderline tasty. Yeah. yeah. That's the why I'm not published. <laughs> oh wow! I got to tell you, Adam, this has been a blast today. Thank you so much for Thank coming. Thank you in very much for having and, me and for bringing this whiskey. Uh, for those of you who have not been paying attention, this is. Is great juice. Legion, baby. What, is, what does this retail Legion. for? A bottle of Legion. Uh, right now, you can probably find it for around thirty-five bucks. See, that's uh, okay. So now I'm even more impressed. Go buy it today. Thirty-five bucks for Overproof. that? Are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah, that's fantastic. And it's 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 really just absolutely delicious. And we have shown that, as Adam said. Uh, we need to leave it to the pros when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to blending. But fortunately, the pros have been hard at work, and they've made uh, they've they made some absolutely fantastic uh, whiskey. So, Ian, while you were uh, out in uh, uh, in the men's room uh, in the last in between the last segment, you I, don't know that I went to the men's room. Uh, well, uh, whichever True. whichever yeah, room you went very to, presumptive. Uh, I was uh, I was speaking with Adam about. I said, you know, we got to have you back more often. We don't we need to not wait this long, and and then I realized. With the portfolio that Beam Centauri has, we could have him on like every other week, and uh, and it would take us a while uh, to go. I'll through I'll brush everything. up on tequila and talk tequila with you sometimes. I, if you listen, like, yeah. I would love it. I'm a tequila fan. Same, I would, same. 
I would so throw down with that. It would be awesome. We'll bring Liliana, our resident tequila expert, back on the show. Have and, you watched one of the shows with her on oh, it? Oh, let me Not tell yet, you. No. Let no, me tell you. I will yeah. watch one. Yeah, She's you're, amazing. You're gonna, uh, you, uh, you, you'll almost be afraid if she's going to be on the show and you're talking tequila. Well, that's I'll be how, the bourbon guy. I'll be fine. Sharp, yeah. That's how sharp <laughs> she is. But, uh, uh, but no, thank you so much. This is really good. And uh, for what it's worth, Ian, I thought your uh, juice was delicious. I thought you both uh, did you a know great what? job. I'm going to toast you with yours. Fair enough. And I will toast you with yours. Have a great week, my friends. Cheers. Smoking and toasting with Ian and Alan Denny makes its world premiere next week for show number 235. <laughs> Be here to hear Alan <laughs> give the opening well, well. It should hey be epic. Have a great week, my friends. Cheers. And cheers, y'all. <laughs> Oh, fun. Thank you. Oh, that was a blast.